Welcome to a realm where the pulse of sports thrills and the spark of technology sizzles. Join Ronald Unk Bolware and your charismatic host, Jay, a aka Jonathan Anderson. Together, they unpack the latest in sports and technology. This is Noonish Sports and Tech. Man, we are very excited to be back in the building, man. As you know, I am your host, J.A., a.k.a. Jonathan Anderson, man, here with my awesome co-host, my uncle. I call him up. Ronald Bowe, what's going down, huh? Oh, nothing much, man. Just, uh, you know, it's it's different being uh, recorded than it is being live. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, trip trip out the gates. Yeah, is trip my, out the gates. Trip say, is my baby C Y gonna be here today? Oh. Sugar Mama L O L. <laughs> I see you. Hey, 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 hey Trip. What's up, man? I don't know what those characters are, but what's up with you, bro? Appreciate you tuning in. We're about to have a great time today. What what you saying though? I I I was just finna tell uh Trip that C Y is here, but all that other stuff I don't know about. Hey man, that between you and CY right there. You know what I'm saying, Trill? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. But now, man, hey, without further ado, we see why you came to the show. And it ain't for us. And I just said it. We see why you came to the show. So uh without further ado, man, first lady F1, Miss Christiana Yeah, but what's going down, girl? We missed you over her. <laughs> I miss you guys too. You're a whole ass year older than the last time I saw you. I can't believe you didn't tell me your birthday was yesterday. You know, it's no coincidence. It was Jerry Jones on Sunday, Stephen A. Smith on Monday, and Jonathan Anderson, aka J A on Tuesday. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> but yeah, it was. October 15th, I celebrated. Uh, turned Jackie Robinson yesterday. Wow. You know? yeah. What's the skincare routine, guys? What are you guys doing over there? What do you what do you guys got? It looks you're looking fresh and young. Hey, you know, just uh I shower and wash my face and that's good. That's good. Well you know, Unc Unc uses the organic soap. You know, oh. <laughs> I, I do use that as well, Unc. I do use the organic soap as well. You know, Unc, Unc like that eucalyptus and <laughs> yeah, and that oatmeal and stuff yeah. like that. You and know, that honey. So you, you don't get to be Unc age and look like this for nothing. No, you don't. I'm trying to. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to start walking six miles. I've walked more miles this year than I have my whole life because of Unc. I'm telling you that right now. But yeah, man. So what's going down, man? Shout out Trip. Shout out Moton. Man, the Sun Man receipts. Uh, man, appreciate y'all tuning in. So, yeah, we are clowns, bro. We we love to have a good time. So, Miss CY, you know, what have you been up to, girl? Man, it's been a couple crazy, crazy weeks. So many things have happened. Let me go. Let me let me go in reverse order here. Uh, Saturday, I helped the Dallas Stars kick off their home opener. I helped them produce this big green carpet event. And I get to have the players come talk to me. And then they do this fun photo op moment. But may I share my highlight of the entire event with you guys? Absolutely. Fun I'd be fact, offended if you didn't. <laughs> fun fact, there is a player named Logan Stankoven. He is new. He's a young buck. He's a very tall 5'8", which is my type of guy. And uh, <laughs> meaning I can speak directly to his face. And I asked him, I asked him what his nicknames are because Stankoven, what an incredible last name to have. I'm sure he's yeah. got nicknames he doesn't love. But I said, you know what? Hey, now that we're friends, you're here with me now. What name do you prefer? And he said, well, my good friends just call me Stank. And I said, well, in that case, oh. you think you think you could just help me out with a little stanky leg <laughs> on uh, on the photo booth? And he was like, I can't do it. And I was like, well, it just feels like you have to now. You know, yeah, like you have to. Yeah. That's your name. I'm going to put some music on it later. Was he and familiar I, with the stanky leg? I had to demonstrate. I had to yeah. demonstrate. I had to do a quick little, you know. I'm from the 254. I don't know if anybody knows, the yep. Killa K, Killeen, yep. Texas. Yeah. Uh, I, think my grad, I think my graduation song was the Stanky Leg in 2009. Uh, so I had to give him a little <laughs> quick demo. And um, no, I let I let our new friend Stank hit the Stanky Leg on my photo booth, and he sure did. So I cannot wait to share that clip. I'll make sure you guys get a copy here. Uh, but he did it just for me. And uh, that was, my, I think, the highlight of my uh, maybe my whole life. I'm not sure. But it was it was a lot of fun. It was cool to see the players, and I love hockey. They're undefeated so far, four and zero. Yeah. Four and zero. So hey, if you guys need a winning Dallas team to cheer on, yeah. If you're if you're not well with your Cowboys, hey. Dallas Stars. Hey, Dallas. Dallas Stars, and and you know what? See why. You know we don't really have uh, too much hockey correspondence on the show. I was thinking. 
I wish might I knew a girl. A, I might wish be I knew a, a girl. Might be an opportunity to see if CY wanted to take on the, the NHL segment of the show. Let's see what the people think. Man, should we allow CY or add, not allow, but ask CY to come on board and do this hockey thing? Because tell you what, other than going to a Dallas Stars game, which is a lot of fun, come to find out. Super fun. I know nothing about hockey. I mean, I played the video game, so I just, I used to love fighting. That counts. That counts. Yeah, yeah I know what all sides, I know oh, the rules. Yeah. I just like to fight, you know, uh, on the hockey game, on NHL. But, uh, but yeah, what would you think about that, CY? You know what? I'll let the audience uh, and my one fan, Trip, if you guys could let me know if you'd like to see some hockey content. Because I'd love to. I love I love hockey. I, lo- I obviously am uh, biased towards the Dallas Stars. But when we talk about consistency across Dallas teams, like they've made some pretty consistent playoff appearances. And even during COVID, we're uh, part of the championship run with the Stanley Cup. And we missed it because we were we were busy with other things. There were other yeah, things yeah, happening. Yeah, absolutely. But- yeah. Uh, in, in terms of consistency, though, and uh, great players, great stories, great fights. Yep. Hockey, hockey's where it's at. So yeah, it goes on. Ha- well. Great I'm drinks not, in between. Uh, oh, yeah. in be- Good drinks. Yeah, those are intermissions. They, oh, yeah. It's no halftime. It's just intermissions, and people get drunk. So by that third <laughs> period, boy, it is going down. Looks like you got another fan. Scooby-Doo, uh, Trip. I mean, I don't know, man. So Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo said, I'm 5'8". He said... <laughs> He said, I love a woman who could do the stanky leg, you know? Oh, no. What, what have I started? Uh, I'll, demi- I'll, demi- I'll, demi- <laughs> I'll demonstrate Pretty, another That's day. another fan, Pretty Lady. He didn't even say hi. That's the only comment he made so far. What up? Appreciate you tuning in, Big Dog. But, yeah. Well, okay. All right. So, so a little stanky leg and a little NHL. I think we can make it happen. <laughs> Let's make it shake. Hey, but for man. now, hey, first lady of F1, you know, we, we are back in this thing. We do have... Uh, some news this week. I guess we'll start with NASCAR and, and get a little build up to the cool things taking place. Let's, but let's, uh, yeah, let's build, let's build up to it. Uh, yeah. NASCAR is in its uh, playoff run right now. They, I feel like they race for most of the year. Their season runs from February to November. Yeah. There are not a lot of races left. But what I wanted to talk about because it reminds me a little bit of F one is how strict they are on the rules on these cars so they obviously do a pre-weight post rate uh, or post race inspection on these cars so they check out how much do they weigh once the race is just about to begin and then what do they look like afterwards same thing with the drivers there are a lot of inspections and rules to follow well especially during the playoffs a couple of points can either make or break you And Alex Bowman is a driver. He plays somewhere like in the top 20, but his car gets disqualified because it was off weight by a small fraction of what these large, large cars uh, actually, what their density is and how much they weigh. He gets disqualified and it actually brings Joey Logano, who's a very well-known successful driver in, in NASCAR, the chance to bump back into the playoffs. So Right now, Kyle Larson is in a great position to win the whole thing. Uh, Ryan Blaney is the reigning champ, um, but they've only got a couple of races left. But it reminded me how Lewis Hamilton won a race just based on disqualifications not too long ago. And same thing with George Russell. There's been many races like this where the cars just don't pass inspection. They give them every shot to do their best. They even will fuel them up, see if they can uh, build up some of that weight back. But... They're thinking was, Alex Bowman. I was going to mention gonna... that. That was what, like three weeks ago, a month ago, something like that. Not yeah, very exactly. recently. Exactly. So it's not as much fun to win that way, I don't feel. But when you're in the playoffs and those points matter, like Joey's probably, he's probably stoked to uh, to be back there. But they've only got a couple races left. This last one that they did was at the Charlotte Road Course, which is a hybrid course at Charlotte, Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's part like a big oval, but then they can do a road, co- road course inside and they call it the road bowl. So that is where um, Kyle won and where Joey is now back into uh, the playoff spots. But they race in Vegas this week, which is great because F1 is going to be in Vegas in just a couple of weeks. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, they're headed towards a championship race which is in, in November. So I'm sure we'll talk a lot about what happens between now and then. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I feel like um, the rules and the regulations on these cars are so strict that they just can't, they can't risk playing around. So it leaves some room for opportunity for people to to land their spot when they thought they might be disqualified. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty wild. I mean, the minimal amount of weight that uh, just the slightest overage can get you completely disqued, you know, yeah, DQ, exactly. right? So that's, or that's under, wild. which is, I think, yeah. another, you know, if they're underweight, do they lose a piece of the car that might have made them faster, or, but more aerodynamic, yeah. you know, whatever whatever it might be. But, yeah. And you also got to 
How does that work though? Like, because I've seen races where people do lose a piece of the car and continue racing, right? So obviously the weight's going to change, and I know the uh, the body is a very it's fairly lightweight, right? Right. Yeah, but, it's a it's a lot. Of, I think a lot of fiber glass pieces. So I think it really yeah. it, I think it depends on what part of the car, and I think that they factor that all in. I'm not an expert on on all of the rules because there's literally a handbook of all of them, but. Um, <laughs> Their their stewards and their their teams know, um, but they've got actually they've got a lot of cool tech that measures and weighs things. The telemetry that comes off these cars is pretty powerful, so the team should know. I feel like uh, during a race, if they're missing something, it's important just so they can have a heads up um, yeah. on things to look at maybe during a pit stop and feel, figure out what they might be able to repair. Yep, yep. So uh, we're gonna get on. I know this is a, a very hard change of subject right here, but we're gonna get on, on Jerry Jones a little later, but. <laughs> Uh, talking about can't talk about all the bad things without talking about the good. Well, one of the good things that he has done has absolutely nothing to do with the Dallas Cowboys, but uh, the Indy races yeah. are coming to Dallas, right? What's going they, down? Tell me about sure, that. 26. 2026. Uh, that's a big year. We got uh, the World Cup coming here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be busy. It's gonna be yeah. busy. So, Jerry uh, got Jerry something to do with Jones, that? I mean. I believe so. Okay, okay, go ahead. He, when does he not? You know, I think a leaf falls and Jerry Jones like, how can I monetize that? You know, yeah. um, so <laughs> IndyCar is a is obviously a, a well known um, league and establishment for for racing. Um, they actually already race here in Texas at Texas Motor Speedway. Yeah. Um, but this massive announcement just last week around IndyCar doing a street course circuit around the Cowboys and Rangers stadiums in Arlington. Yeah. So it's actually going to be called the Arlington Grand Prix. But uh, but nice. Jerry Jones, of course, has has something to do with it. So they did For a sure. big, pr big press conference. It's a little over two miles. These cars will hit 200 plus miles an hour through this street course. But there's a lot of buzz and excitement. I think yeah. it's part because people don't really love when cars race in a circle. So road courses like what NASCAR <laughs> does and obviously that, yep. with F1, they're like, sure. all right. All right. Let's get these things enough. on. The, yeah, let's get them on the streets. That's yeah, pretty cool, I though. Yeah, I'm excited sure. about it. I think, yeah. uh, I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to pitch for a shot for us to maybe do some live recordings in 2026. Hey, let's the, do it. Uh, at the track. But I think that I, I think it's going to be really cool. And, and more than anything, what I'm excited about is I feel like a street course gives a different level of accessibility to the fans. Like you feel like you're part of it versus watching them. I don't know when they're driving around in a big old oval. I feel like they're on a stage and I'm not part of it. But a street race, they turn those corners. They on the roads that you drive. You know, it, it makes you feel like you're more a part of of the sport. And so yeah. I think it'll do good things. I'm sure it'll have some great economic impact that Arlington will brag about for months to come. Uh, but I think it'll be um, I think it'll be fun. And I think we have a shot to be there. Hey, that's another win for Jerry. Not necessarily for the Cowboys, but that's another one for Jerry. Yeah, it's <laughs> interesting. They they really actually did like some very interesting co-branding. Like there's Cowboys stuff as part of the promotion for yeah. it and Indy yeah. and then the Rangers. So, you know, I think they're just highlighting the Texas teams. Why are the Dallas, why aren't the Dallas part of it? They're in Arlington. They're really trying to make Arlington Jerry? like a new city within the DFW that's like on the map, right? They're build, right? They got plans to build skyscrapers, all kinds of stuff out there in Arlington, right? So... Yeah, uh, I think Jerry's just you know partnering with uh, the the mayor Arlington, who is pro sports and and you know uh, Mayor Ross, and uh, they're just making things happen. You know, doing what they can yeah. to put Arlington on the map. But I think it's yeah. like uh, you know Frisco is is popping up too for all of the things that they all the different facilities that they have. But Arlington yep. to me uh, is is. Uh, obviously ahead of that with their actual physical stadium presence and for sure. um, the teams there. So yeah, I, I think it's going to be a really cool thing. I hope it generates buzz for racing in general. I think that uh, I don't think we'll see an F1 race here anytime soon. So IndyCar is about as close as I think we can get until we, uh, until we get to a, an F1 race, maybe in a couple of decades um, here in Dallas, but I'm excited for it. I look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do too as well. I do too as well. And we got people over here, Hey, we'll we'll talk about Caitlin Clark later. If y'all have seen anything in the past, y'all know I am absolutely a fan of Caitlin Clark. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we'll yeah, yeah, racing, later. but let's talk about yeah, nah, about you know, they just here. shout out moderator Pal Yang, man, uh, J J L E American, OKI. Uh, appreciate y'all tuning in, Baby Yaga, John Cross. Thank y'all for watching, man. And if y'all haven't subscribed. Hit that subscribe Hit button, that subscribe. and then y'all will be notified yeah, when man. we own every week. Hit that like button. Yeah.
<laughs> one good time for your mind. But uh, but see why? Well, also, you know, first lady F one. You know, we can't go anywhere with F without talking about F one, knowing that we are back in business this week. What's going oh, down? What is going down? Thank God I have been, what if I do with my Sundays? You know, I, I can sleep in, I can run errands and all before a 10 a.m. London start NFL game. <laughs> uh, but um, no, I've, I've missed Formula One. Um, but this, this week we are in Austin, Texas yes. uh, for Formula One, the U.S. Grand Prix, kicking off a triple header. Uh, we're in the last part of the season, guys. Can you even imagine when Crazy. we first started talking about how this was the longest season of F1 ever? And yeah. uh, we've we're only here. had like six races, uh, six races left. Um, I can't, I can't even believe it. I feel like um, time has has truly flown by. But this one is an exciting one. Now, if you guys remember, Singapore is where we talked about Daniel Ricardo maybe not racing beyond that. And they did this really bizarre send off where they didn't say anything formally during the race, but everyone kind of sensed it that he was going to be gone and this might be his last race. So Daniel yep. Ricardo gets the strangest goodbye from uh, Red Bull and RB ever. And honestly, Formula One at the end of the race, Basically, the teams and the drivers are like thanking him, like on the radio, like "Thanks, Ricardo, we're gonna miss you, Danny Rick." All these. So they're things. Like, like forcing him into like F one retirement, <laughs> right? Like no one's made, no one's made a formal announcement. Like the race ends, and and again, like the teams haven't said anything. It was all this like really strange. Like, am I being broken up with? But I don't know. Like everyone's yeah. you know saying goodbye, but no one's broken like, up. Everybody with me. knew it. All the drivers they're racing with him, and they know everybody he's this knew. is. Hey, this is Danny's last race. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like we should thank Make him sure now. Make sure you say hi to Danny. <laughs> oh my God, exactly. It's like yeah. it's like that in high school when like people knew things about you, but you're like, what do you? I don't. What do you know? You know, yeah. there's a rumor that you're not clued in on. Like that's how it felt, and it was so bizarre. Yeah. So not long after Singapore, and I think the last time I was on the show, I said, you know, I didn't love how they handled that without a formal announcement. Like, who the hell's taking his place? It's the middle of the season. What are we doing? And sure enough, literally the day after our show they make a formal announcement and Danny yeah. does too, that he's leaving. That was his last race. And this young kid, Liam Lawson, who's, who's driven um, a, as a backup before he's a little New Zealander yeah. and uh, New he Zealand. is gonna, he's going to fill the, uh, the seat for Danny. Um, so much culture in New Zealand. It's a lot of things going on over there. But, There's hmm. a lot of things. Uh, yeah. They also love driving. They've got a lot of, we've got a lot of drivers from there. Great um, soccer team too. Hmm. They um, uh, so no, they I'm not thinking about. I'm thinking about the wrong. I'm thinking the they, Netherlands. I'm sorry, that's not New Zealand. <laughs> that is the Netherlands. Similar but different. Um, they do the haka dance over there, don't they? They they do in New Zealand. Oh, they, they do? do. Yeah, I believe. Oh, okay. I feel like I see that more in different places now because they're representing different cultures who have come to different you know areas. Like I've seen them at at actually sporting events here in, yeah, in Texas for sure. Um, but yeah, so Liam Lawson is taking his seat now. Here's the weird part is they've replaced Danny with Liam for the rest of the season, but Liam doesn't have a contract to drive as the second driver next season. So our good friend Yuki Sonoda mm -hmm. doesn't officially have a partner yet. So I think they're going to test out Liam and see how he does. Oh, wow. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a, a dress hey, rehearsal. He's got will. six races, six races for this seat, bro, if you want it. Yeah. You know? Six exactly. races, Liam. You know, Danny... He didn't agree with it. Matter of fact, we didn't even tell him we were doing it. We just <laughs> yeah. kind of shoo shooed him and made him retire early because yep. we know that he's not the future, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we need we're, we're looking towards the future now. We need the next five to ten years, right? The guy that's going to be here competitively racing. So yeah, let me see what you got, young buck. Yeah, I I I think he's got a a fair opportunity to to prove his his worth in the in the seat before locking in a, a full contract, but. I say we go, we, we, we need to talk on a larger scale how important this race is. Yeah. Max Verstappen has not won a race, I think, in eight races now. That's what I was uh, thinking about. I was like, how are they going to have these expectations for this young buck and they can't even beat McLaren and they're struggling to beat Ferrari and these other big Aston Martin? Like, that's exactly what I was thinking right now. Exactly what I have been thinking about really since we saw the initial kind of fumble with Red Bull several mm -hmm. races ago. Like, what on earth is going on? Perez is barely finishing races. He's DNFing all over the place. He's not uh, locking the points the way he had, cons you know, he's last lost that consistency. But then same thing for Max. Max is getting on the podium, but is he is he 
is he as competitive as the McLarens? It's tough to tell. So yeah. the last suck, like literally the last six or seven pole sitters have been literally just Leclerc. Yeah. And Lando. And that's it. No max to be seen. Yep. Um, so I I think that it's a very interesting dynamic right now at, at Red Bull. This is an important, important race. McLaren has officially surpassed Red Bull on the driver. I'm sorry, in the constructors championship. He still leads. This all shows you how dominant he was to start. Mm -hmm. um, he's still leading in the drivers. But if Lando gets a podium placement and even if Max finishes in the top 10, I think the points are really going to slowly um, creep into each other. And, and Lando's going to have an excellent shot of winning the drivers um, championship this year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like if it's, a, you know, from my eyeballs, from my eyeball test, Lando's <laughs> going to win this thing. Like, Verstappen was, when I saw Verstappen happy to just be on the podium, <laughs> yeah, I knew this thing had taken a shift, you know? The bar the bar has been lowered. And speaking of uh, McLaren, is is Unk wearing papaya? Is that an orange shirt that I see? Is it hey. orange-yellow? Yes, ma'am, man. Oh, he's rocking the papaya <laughs> orange today. <laughs> Oh. You know, okay, he's a, one of the papaya boys. Okay, yeah. um, you knew, hey, you that's knew. And that's hey, papaya hey, unk hey. right there. Papaya <laughs> unk. <laughs> well, hey. he's he. Go ahead, Unc. Go ahead. I want to hear about your papaya. Oh no, oh, no, it's just hey, Unc is a colorful person, and uh, yeah, he a papaya yeah. boy and probably some other stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it kind of matches right your on. drink. Like I, I, I know you got, I know you got style, Unc. I know you do. Hey, I yeah. appreciate that. Hey, Unk, stay fresh. Come on now. <laughs> Unk, stay fresh. Well, I'm going to use Unk as inspiration for my prediction for this race, the Austin race, coming up on Sunday. Well, oh, one more point is it's a sprint race. So another opportunity for another team to get points. We'll see. I don't, yep. you know me, I'm not a huge fan of the sprint concept. I feel like it's a mini race that just burns through a bunch of resources to get the same person the same points who's going to win but i don't know we'll see maybe something crazy will happen yeah um but uh sprint race but i am predicting we see a double podium from the papaya boys so i i'm okay. suspecting we'll see lando and oscar um on the uh on the podium but may i give a shout out to my boyfriend uh charles leclerc it's hey. his it's his birthday today hey, you heard that trip. and sorry sorry, trip. Bro. sorry today it's his birthday um and uh, I am suspecting we'll see a Ferrari podium with uh, with Charles. Hey, so Charles Charles Leclerc is a birthday, bro. It's a birthday, bro. Bunch of October baby. Hey, that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy. So we got Jerry Jones, Stephen A. Smith, J.A. and Charles Leclerc yeah. all in a row. You guys all kind of look alike if you squint a little bit. And, you know what I'm saying? And it, yeah. and, you know if they. You, no, know. you got to squint a lot to see. see you got to squint. You have to squint, but like also maybe just close your eyes. You know. Yeah. yeah you know. I don't know if they can fill these <laughs> shoes. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> but now, see why this has been a great. Okay, so happy to have you back, man. We got the first lady of half one back in the building. Oh, I've man, it's a, such a pleasure, CY. We have missed such you, Pastor We so glad you're back, man. Well, we got, a we got a triple We got a triple header, uh, yeah. so I will see you guys soon. So don't forget about me. We'll be in Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, yeah. and then there's the last two big races of the year. But I will report back before then, and I'm happy to see you guys. And, Jonathan, I hope you had a great birthday. Thank you very much. Had a great birthday. Absolutely excellent birthday. I appreciate that, CY. Okay, I'll see y'all next week. Okay, yeah, all right, CY. Bye, I'll see you later. Bye, Please. CY. Man, hey, man, that's a great bye. report. Hey. First lady of F1. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. That's how we get down, man. That's what I'm talking about. But y'all know what's up, man. A lot to talk about. Sports and tech. Got the F1 and NASCAR and Indy discuss, man. So if you're a CY fan, you know, please don't leave us just because she's not on the screen anymore. And oh, uh, matter of fact, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can know when see why it's coming back. Every Wednesday at noon, she's going to be right here, man, talking about some good F1 NASCAR and soon to be NHL. Hockey. Hockey. Or soon to be hockey. Let's NHL. go. Yeah. Let's go. National oh. Hockey League. Yeah, man. <laughs> she, she's an analytics queen. She's been in the Forbes magazine, man. We are blessed to have her on the show and part of this show. Yes. Let's get it. So, Hey, Trip, how we sound right now? You want to check? Yeah, I check right here. Let me see how we sound on the... Yeah, we should be menu. sounding good. Because I think a little bit of a problem, Trip would have said something, Trip. Hey, yeah. man, we appreciate everybody out there. But, you know, we 
we point out Trip because Trip has been with us from a far, for a good while now. Trip's our Doing first member. First member. To join. Yeah, to, to, to uh, join. Yeah, and he's the first person to always say, oh, y'all got a little echo. You know, you're having a little problem. Yeah, yeah. we good. We Gucci. Yeah. We Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Yeah, man. So, yeah, let's go on and get to these topics, man. So, it was a, a hot weekend in sports, man. Starting with the Red River Rivalry. Oh. Uh. Hey, man, you know the Red River Rivalry is uh, really something special because, you know, we grew up living just a few blocks from the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, how long has that rivalry been going on? Over 100 years, huh? Oh, I don't know exactly. Uh, a long, long time. Long, far back as I can remember. Yeah. And far back as anybody I know can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it like that. Yeah. But it's, it's got to be at least 80, 90, 100 years. It's going way, way back in the 19th. You know, whatever. Yeah. You know, and that and that Red River rivalry, man. You know, a, a whole lot of times, rankings and records don't matter. Yeah, you're right. When you play your number one rivalry, you're right about that. Uh, you know, the number one rival. A lot of things go you know, out the window yeah, when that rivalry gets going. You know, rivalry. But gets this going. time, it, it it's kind of held. And, you know, every now and then it do hold true. Yeah. The higher ranked teams, but yeah. But sometimes in that Red River rivalry classic, man, it don't matter about nothing. Yeah. But but blowing the whistle yeah. and playing the game. And and this is the thing. So when I saw what UT did to Michigan early in the season, at that point in time, I knew they were gonna be very good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They handled Michigan. I know Michigan isn't the same. They, you know, Jim Harbaugh is gone. They lost their quarterback, running back, but still, very good team, right? You know, Michigan top, always top, be solid. Yeah, top they be solid all the time. Top, yeah, solid team. Yeah, right. I'm not saying they're one of the best in the, in the league right you now. May, I mean, you know, Michigan but, gonna be a top 20, 30. You know, I mean, when you're in the top 30, even I mean, do you know how many colleges it is? If you're in the top 40, yeah, I mean, you know, people you know poop all that exactly, stuff. Exactly, yeah. man. There's hundreds of universities around here, and Michigan is very good. <laughs> yeah, and Texas was just, I mean, it wasn't even a a, a game, you know. <laughs> and uh, excuse me. I had a feeling they were going to come in and be very so good. Long. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened to Jackson Arnold uh, and why he wasn't playing. Uh, I guess he's been injured or something. I'm not positive. But uh, at that point, as soon as I saw Jackson Arnold wasn't even on the field for Oklahoma, I didn't know how Oklahoma would possibly stand a chance. You know? Yeah, and, and, you know, Texas came out there and did what it did. Quinn Ewers is the best quarterback on that team. You know, by far. He not is close. Not yeah. Close, you know, man. Arch Manning is a high. Maybe the future. Prospect. Yeah, he's a he future. future, but, but, but he's Quinn, not right now. Quinn is a developed, mature quarterback at this point, making great decisions, knows when to run, and he's athletic. And people don't give him the credit, you know, for his athleticism. I ain't saying he's Lamar Jackson, but he's athletic enough. You know, he's like a Baker Mayfield type. Well, you know, uh, Arch Manning, when he broke that run, he was running fast. He had the same speed that the cheetah had. Yeah. Like said. Yeah, that's what yeah. I hear. Yeah. That's what I hear. Yeah. You know? That's just like them saying Daniel Jones ran as fast as Lamar Jackson. <laughs> hey, when you scared, you can hit another gear. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you like this. This is what, they, this is what I just heard Deion Sanders say about Jerry Rice. He said, against the clock, Jerry Rice 4 6. Against people, he 4 1. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Against people. Because nobody ain't never called Jerry Wright, but he's slow. Yeah. And he got a lot of long touchdowns. Yeah. So I don't understand. Man. You know, yeah, sometimes it, the clock is deceiving. Exactly. Football speed is a different thing. Like yeah. I say, when you run scared, yeah. you get real yeah. quick. You and know? you got that ball in your hand. Hey, and typically yeah. dudes on offense don't want to be touched, you know? Yeah. It, and they it, get a little fast. Skills guys, yeah. And they, they get, get a little, little fast. <laughs> and when somebody's about to, hey, that hog get to jump. Boys running scared out there. So, but yeah, man, uh, UT went out there and dominated this weekend. It was absolutely amazing to. I didn't, you know, see it as much as I wanted to see, but uh, the highlights, I watched everything. They just, they went up there and dominated. Oh, yeah, UT uh, was clearly the better team. Another great dominate team. The line, yeah. Dominate the line of scrimmage. Yeah. That's what I know. They look like a national that. championship type you know, team. Yeah, you absolutely know? they do. Yeah, they, they got that uh, that dynamic tight end, just like they did when VY was here. They got the solid quarterback. He's not VY, but he throws a lot better than VY. A lot of talent on the outsides, man. They got running backs coming at you and UT is another again that's the destination in Texas that the kids want to go to like it was back when I was coming up hey. they lost that luster for a few years but they got it all the way back now hey it was like that when I was coming up yeah are you thinking me and Eric Calvin come out of school the same year yeah and yeah <laughs> Eric Calvin went to yeah yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. UT there yeah, that's yeah. the that's the school to, to 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 go to now man but OU you know they're getting better um 
I don't I don't know. We're gonna see. They, I know they got a lot of studs on that side of the ball too, but they got a young quarter. They got young quarterbacks right now. You know. Um. You know. Uh, we saw what Dylan Gabriel did for Oregon, going yeah. out there beating Ohio State. So there's no telling if he was still in Oklahoma how this game would would go. But he ain't there no more. Yeah. So ain't no point in having that conversation right now. But Oklahoma still got some some good talent. You know. I think they came and prepared for the SEC. I don't think they're gonna be the last ranked team in that in that conference. Or no, anything no, like that. no, you know, no, still a very no. Good team, but Texas is just, in my opinion, uh, far and ahead better than a lot of other teams. Now they got another big test this weekend, and that's the thing about the SEC. You don't, yeah, you don't have did. time to rest. No, you don't no. got time to heal up. Because you know Texas right back in there against Georgia this weekend coming up. So we're gonna talk about that later, though. And if you're really good, you should be ready to go every week. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So every time they line up. I'm ready to go. Yeah, and, and, and if you know, if you don't know, now you're about to know. This is my squad right here. Them know the day, boys. Still getting it in. Going in on. You know, got us another dub. Dun, 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 Y'all see us, don't you? Y'all see us, don't you? Oh, my. Duh. Let's go! Another dub. Stanford, what's good? Same Stanford dudes I saw last year when I was at that Colorado game when Stanford came back from that 29 0 lead and beat yeah. them. Yeah. That same quarterback was playing uh, uh, this weekend, getting dominated. That same receiver that, that caught one on Travis Hunter's head playing this weekend, getting dominated against Notre Dame. We got a very good team, too, man. So that's all I got to say, man. Keep winning, Notre Dame. Keep winning. I'll be back in there, man. We're going to get some more watch parties going. I had some things going. I was in Boulder this past weekend, and we about to get to that. So, we didn't get a chance to really do live with the Notre Dame and all that good stuff, but that is my squad. Since I was a kid, I got a, a, a few more teams I root for as well now because I got friends at those at those schools, but Notre Dame is my squad. That's all I got to say, huh? All you know your about friends not playing their coaching, right? Their coaching. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, their coaching. Yeah, because yeah, you had a birthday the other day. Yeah. Most of your- yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> Yeah. All his friends are coaching. He got a friend that's a coach in Colorado. That's why he's in Colorado. Yeah. So that, he's actually that is the chief of it. staff. He's the one. Oh, who, what is this? Yeah, chief He's the one putting people in place out there for Dion. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And okay. then my boy at uh, Florida State is the head coach. Oh, yeah. Hey, Norvell. what up, Mike? What up, Norvell? He's no. the head coach of the team. So these ain't just people in the building. Like, these are significant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Significant folks, man. But so before we get to that Colorado game, you know, I'm going to just talk a little bit about. My weekend, right? Hold on, hold on. Make sure my mic ain't echoing. Making sure my mic sounds good and on point, right? So uh, this past weekend, of course, and we'll come back to these uh, games and whatnot. So went to Boulder, man. Went to Boulder, man. Uh, my boy, like I was just talking t- talking about, he's chief of staff out there in, in Colorado, man. So got the you know full. Excellent treatment, wristbands, like, you know, sat in the suites and on the field access, you know. So I had an opportunity this past weekend. I watch It Is What It Is every morning. That's just my, that's, my, that's how I wake up in the mornings, oh, you know. Right. It is what it is. So that's hosted by Mason Cameron. Shout up, It Is What It Is. Hey, we're going to get that collab one of these days. But uh, make Cameron out there, you oh, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said if they, you got a photo with Yeah, him. got a photo with him right here, man. Dapped him up. Just cool cat. Oh yeah, oh, cool okay. cat. You oh, know, yeah. very humble, like just very approachable dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, very like, approachable. Yeah, I mean, he's and, not humble. Yeah, and he, and he, he was humble. he was happy. No, yeah. he yeah yeah you right. He's not humble, but he was he, he, he appreciated me coming up talking to him. I was like, bro, I watch you. I watch you every morning, big dog. Oh yeah, okay. Let me let me get this picture real quick. You know what I'm saying? That was cool meeting Cam. Good people, man. And then you know I'm going down the sideline. I go. I was about to cross over the little uh, the little tunnel area where they walk through. And go to the other side, and I'm sitting here, and I hear this voice. I'm like, damn. I see this big bald-headed dude standing right there. And I remember, ah, oh, Goldberg's son played for Colorado. That's Goldberg. Oh, okay. Goldberg's son played for Colorado. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gage Goldberg. Goldberg, Goldberg played college ball, too. Yeah, he played NFL, I, too. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. He, he, was, he, he played, too, in the NFL. But, man, I met Bill Goldberg, man. Sat there and chopped it up with him for, like, 10 minutes. Got his information, man. I hit him up Tuesday via text. He hit me right back. I was like, yo, I was I was serious about you coming on my show. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, I'm busy for about the next few weeks. You know, hit me up in the next few weeks, and I'm absolutely coming on your show. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, man, yeah. we're going to have Goldberg. 
have an interview with Goldberg here in the next few weeks, man. It's gonna be a great show. I'll let y'all know. Give y'all plenty of plenty of heads up, man. I talked to Derek yesterday too. He's gonna come on the show. Not next week, not the week after, but the week after that. Derek so James. Derek James gonna yeah, be on the he's show. Physically come on the show or he's gonna be on nah, he's gonna be on be on the yeah. uh, on the Zoom. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. On the show via Zoom. So uh, I like I like it via Zoom. It's a little oh, better absolutely. when things just run smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you just I'm, I'm just asking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh we're gonna have Derek, you know, zoom in in, in in three weeks, you know, talking about, you know, what he's got going on right now, everything, man. That's my bro, man. So uh but yeah, man, looking forward to that. But it was so cool to meet Goldberg. That was my favorite wrestler. I was like, bro, I heard so many kids in practice because of you dog, like just straight spearing dudes for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Like we could do it back then. It was oh, legal. Yeah. oh man, oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm coming full fully extended. Pow. <laughs> Nah, yeah. you know, Goldberg was incredible. It was, that was my favorite wrestler, but it was oh, very yeah. cool. It was so many of It was Durant was there, Russell Westbrook, John Wall, T.O., um, Carmelo Anthony and his son was well, out there. You said T.O. two weeks in a row, right? Yeah, I saw T.O. Yeah. saying the week before at the yeah. Celebrity Ball. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I saw, yeah, we played. I played against T.O. in the Celebrity Softball game, and then he was at the game yeah. on Saturday night yeah. in Boulder. So, and man, just we had so a, everybody I know, that home run that J.A. put on the show, put on the that was last week. That wasn't back when he was playing baseball. Yeah. That was last week. Yeah, so you can still hit home wrong. Yeah, I can still swing it, man. Yeah. I ain't picked up a bat in a year. And I just, you know. Went out there and hit a home. Did what it do. Did, did no what it do deal. in the home run no uh, derby deal. contest. And what actually up? won it. Donovan Collins was going down, man. I see you talking your, sh- your ish. What up, Scott Scoper? What's going down, man? Appreciate y'all tuning in. Vid, appreciate y'all tuning in. Hey, go hit that. Like button, go hit that subscribe, subscribe button, button, man. And, and then talk share about it with somebody sports. that likes sports and technology. Let's talk about some sports. So uh, keep it moving. Had a great time in Boulder. Oh, what I did do was drive a a, a, a Tesla that was fully uh, automated, right? The homies were scared to do it. Man, that mud drove us all around the town. Everywhere. I wasn't touching nothing. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. Oh, I, was, yeah. I, I hit the little... Hit the little stick twice, wop wop, just like that. And that I put the address in the navigation, hit the stick twice, that mud just take off through the parking lot, navigating around everything, man. I'm just sitting here. You just gotta make sure you're paying attention. Oh yeah. You that's know what's what I'm been saying? like that. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying that's my first time, time actually just using it. it. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. from A to B. Oh. Well, all they, I gotta do is park when I get there. Yeah, but they tell you to stay in stay engaged. Yeah. Because one dude uh Put the stuff in, got in the back seat, started reading the book. Oh, no, no. Yeah, you, you know got... what happened, right? Oh, that must stopped on him. No. What? Because he uh he was on the side of a truck. Yeah. And the and the and the Tesla couldn't tell the truck from the horizon and hit the truck. Oh no, that's wild. But if he right would have been engaged, yeah. Like they tell you. He'd have been able to do whatever yeah. he had to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but that's was a whole other story, man. I that's, just wanted to That was that was that was a dope vehicle. Hey, Great experience. One of my best homeboys. Got that Tesla. Yeah. And they very good to drive and ride on, but I wouldn't want to own one. Man, I, hey, after that. Not right now. Not right now. After that, like, I still want the Hummer is what I'm, that's, that's my oh. next vehicle. But it does that as well. And you still got to stay engaged. But hands off, man. Look, my no hands. You know, I got banned on TikTok, too, because I was, oh, yeah. I was TikToking while it was going live. And I, or, uh, I was going live on TikTok, like, showing the car. And TikTok don't want you doing that, so they oh. banned me. So I couldn't do nothing live when oh, I was in Colorado. TikTok but I got don't want you to be though. driving yeah. and showing that you're driving. Yeah. That not, hey. not the automated vehicle. Yeah, know? but what well, TikTok is doing it for your safety, not yeah, that. Absolutely. And then they don't want somebody to be doing that live and then crash. Yeah, but you, you know, know shit and all, man, I was safe, yeah. man. That, that Tesla know how to drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, it was better than any Uber driver that be hitting them brakes on your boy. <laughs> but uh, anyways, keeping it moving. So Colorado, the game against K State, man. Uh, did you watch the game up? Yeah. I mean, it I was. I watched uh, part of it. it. Kind of got a little late on all. Yeah, yeah. It got very late. It got very late. And uh, man, you know, Kansas State just being there live, it was doing some weak stuff. They were doing some real weak stuff. So the second half, right? They come out. I think they had like a seven, eight minute drive to start the second half out, right? And they score. Colorado gets the ball back. You know, uh, first down, pass 12 yards. Kansas State player goes down to the ground, injured. All right, pause. Game pauses for like five minutes. Next play, Colorado pass, first down. Another player goes down, injured. Colorado State. We watching their coaches over here, like, try to make adjustments with the team while this is happening. Five plays consecutively. 
Colorado got a first down, and Kansas State would a guy on Kansas State would fall down injured. I know Lane Kiffin was doing the same thing at Ole Miss, and and, and people were talking about that. But this was like because you can't get timeouts, right? And people make second half adjustments. Yeah. This is their first drive, and they're building momentum. They scored on the drive. That's when uh I got I got that on on the phone too when uh when ten caught that pass. Yeah. And no, 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 that was later. That's that's the one that uh they they uh they went up with. That was a, the leading score. But um, but nah, it was just it was bogus what Kansas State was doing. Like it was very bogus, but they jumped there out there on them boys. Like Colorado could not stop the run, and it was blatantly obvious, you know, before the game started. Last week on the show, I said one of the main things that I'm looking at is how the defense plays with Shiloh back in the game. Because since he's been out, they were winning games. They won three games straight. Oh, he's out all those three? Yeah, he got hurt in the Nebraska oh, yeah, game. Yeah, sure did, sure did. So he's been out all three of those games. The guy that came in for Shadow has been playing very well, securing tackles, playing his position well, you know, not getting beat deep, you know, reading, reading assignments. I said, what we're going to see today is if the defense gets better or worse with Shiloh on defense. I'm not putting everything on Shiloh. But their running back, Kansas yeah. State's running back is real deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Shiloh was on his knees several times in this game from getting shook. And this guy was my kind of running back where he's a, 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 a one-cut type of running back. And when he hits that cut, he put that foot in the ground – He's four or five yards the opposite direction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Shiloh, I'm talking several times, just ended up on his knees like James Brown at the end of a show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give him my cape. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, hey. it was bad. And yeah. uh, Dion called it out in, in the postgame oh, press absolutely. conference. Absolutely. But this is the whole thing. It wasn't good. Kansas State's better than anybody they have played. And this is nothing. Nobody I think expected- Kansas City... I, I think Kansas State is better than Nebraska. I do. Oh, no doubt. Nobody expected Colorado to be in this game. No, let's think about it now. Well, you know. And Colorado almost won. Colorado was a lot better. And they are continue. It's consistent at this point. Yeah, they're, they're a lot better. And I'm going to say. They're a lot you better know, than people think they are. Well, you know, I don't go by what people. People thought they weren't going to. First off, last year, people. At the first of the year, people saying they're going to win 9 or 10 games. I'm saying, no, 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 not last year. At the beginning not, of this year. You know, at the beginning of this year. It's a, they got voted to get last in the Big 12. That's only because of hate and jealousy, man. Exactly. It don't have nothing to do with talent. Yeah. You you know, know, and they, they don't, don't really hate know. And jealousy. They didn't know the talent yeah, that was so, that's know, out there. You know, hate and jealousy cause a lot of things. So, so when somebody say something, I have to go look and see for myself. And I know good. And anybody that... Uh, Four games, they wouldn't have finished last in the conference. Yeah. If yeah, they no won the doubt. same amount of games they won last year, they wouldn't have been last. Yeah. So, come on, man. And this yeah. conference is not as strong as the conference they came from. Yeah. So, you know, people, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just hating. I'm going to say this. This is, people think that uh, uh, Colorado games are very popular on TV because it, people are not cheering for Dion. They, they watching to see Dion crash, man. Yeah, absolutely. I would say at least 60 65% of the people, maybe 70% of the people, want Dion to fail, man. You, you can't consider this game against Kansas State a crash. Even no, though they no, lost, no, no. it's no, still a saying, win in no. public in the public eye. Because no. they're still competitive with Kansas State. Oh, absolutely. And 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 but, I believe know, you should have won that game. Yeah, but as but as a coach and as a player, you don't <laughs> There, there is no such thing as moral victory. Yeah, no Dion doubt. don't think it's a victory, and the players shouldn't think it's a victory. Now the fans, it's okay for the for the Colorado fans to man, we wasn't even supposed to do that, but you, but it's not okay for the players and the coaches. And, and I'm gonna tell you this: uh, that last drive when Shadur could have come down and put him in position to to kick a field goal, I believe Shadur was emotionally shook at that point. Right, he had already lost Travis Hunter. And Jimmy Horn in the first half. First quarter. They were both out of the game. First quarter. Right? So they did this without Jimmy Horn and Travis Hunter. Absolutely. Right? And then, before that last drive, 
Amarion Miller was having an outstanding game. Yeah. Outstanding game. Makes a long, a, a deep ball catch down the field. Beautiful catch, comes down with it. The guy behind him, hip drop tackle. Breaks his leg. Nasty break. Horse collar, not hip drop. No, this was hip drop. This is hip drop. Where he catching from? Well, he was he was like on the side of him. And, oh, and Amari on came oh, back like this. It. Oh, he did so the same thing. So he grabbed him like this and then sat down on him. Yeah. And broke, I mean, the young man's leg. It was out of there. Tough young man, because he he got carried off the field like this, you know, with people. Well, you know, you know this is the whole thing about all like, these tackles. Horrible. You know. Horrible break. You know, <laughs> I'm just like this. Good game. They've been doing that football forever. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and no they outlawed it, yeah. you know, and now it's outlawed. Everybody act like, oh, he did this, he dirty. Yeah. No, he did what he needed to do at the time to get the man to the ground. Yeah. And that's what they teach you. Get him on the ground, son. Yep. And if you say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, yeah. you, you, you don't have time to think all that. You got to think of getting him on the ground. And I'm sure that that young man didn't sit there and think, oh, I'm going to hip drop break this dude's leg. Yeah. No, he got a, he grabbed him, and the only way that he could get him to the ground is just sit down himself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so yeah. And, and yeah, Trip. hey, that play against Will Shepard, that was absolutely, that last play of the game, Uh, the the incomplete, what was real incomplete, that was pass interference, easy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was pass interference. That, that's that old Tom Brady play. That's that Russell Westbrook play. You throw the ball up, you put some arc on it, and your receiver has to come back through the cornerback. And... Nine times out of ten, that's called pass interference. I don't know what that guy was looking at. You know? Yeah. I don't know what that guy was looking at. So, um, you know, it's a clip somebody saying, hey, uh, something about the line to the ref, and he's just laughing, right? To that same ref that didn't make that call. But, you know, it is what it is, man. It was a great game, great effort by Colorado. Man, it was awesome to watch. Uh, I'm very proud of those boys, man. I hope they – uh, continue to just believe, man, because it's going to be more two lost teams in that 12 game playoff. There oh, will yeah. be some two lost oh, teams there. Oh, yeah. And they still got a chance to go and win the Big 12 because Iowa State, they got to play Kansas State. Like, you know, it's some things oh, that yeah. got to take place. So uh, I think they still are in control of their own destiny. Um, it's going to be hard for them to get it. It's going to oh, be hard. I'm going to tell you like this. Just they got to have some very impressive wins. Uh, uh, simply for the, for, the, for the way the press and stuff feel about them, it's going to be hard for them to get in that 12 team. Oh, yeah, no doubt. So even if they got two losses, it's going to be hard for them to get it. No doubt. Unless they if go they out got just, three, it's out. Oh, it's a done deal. They got to win out and they got to win yeah. big. Yeah, they got to win, win They got to have some impressive wins to get in that, that, that playoff. But I think they can do it, man. Oh, yeah. I think they can That's do it. That's a positive build. So, yeah. Uh, but let me see. What would you say? Yeah, yeah. It was hip drop. It was hip drop for sure, man. So, uh, also, uh, Oregon, I mentioned earlier, uh, Dylan Gabriel, former OU quarterback, man, went out there and beat Ohio State, man, 32-31. Uh, the kid is very good. That's why they gave him 1.2 million to come play quarterback out there. Oh yeah. So I think he'll be drafted. I don't know what round, but uh, he's he's a player, man. He's just a football player. You know, he's one of those guys that can go. So I'll uh, be looking forward to that kid in the future in the NFL. Ashton Janty, we talked about him last week, man. Played against Hawaii this past weekend. Had 217 more yards on 31 carries and a touchdown against Hawaii. So. That kid's got what fifteen hundred yards yeah, in six a, games. That's a lot, man. He running. No, I mean, you know, everybody's like, "Well, he playing this team. He playing that team. Somebody else can play them teams before." He he played Oregon and got two hundred yards yeah. on them this I year. I mean, and, and this is the thing: whoever you say he played, somebody else played them before, and they didn't do that against them. What yeah. he did, so quit trying to poo poo on who they play. Yeah, against. man. You yeah, know. man. You know, people talking to next Barry Sanders right now with him, but ah. Uh, you know, he's the first Ashton Janty. Yeah, thank you. You know what he's I'm the, saying? Barry, Barry Sanders is the first, only, last, and I'm glad of that. And this young man, he can, he's the first, only, last. Let the young man be himself and don't start comparing him to nobody because he's not like anybody. Yeah. He's not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's he's a player, man. Oh, yeah. Is Nebraska in the Big 12 this year? I think they're Big 10, so that's not a conference loss. Yeah, yeah, that's a no. That's right. Yeah, I think they're that's Big right. 10 they're now. Big 10. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, they only got one loss in the Big 12 right now. Shout out trip for that one. So, man, so Bet US, man. Hey, like I said, if you haven't gone over uh, to go on over to Bet US, man, uh, go on and get you an account over there, man. This is where we do our betting, man. And get your phone, get your phone, go to your QR code and scan that QR code right there, and that'll send you straight to it. And I hit this past weekend both of my parlays. I hit. 
You know, so that's what it is. That's how we get down over here, man. I, I hit the NFL pretty easy. You know, I was like, man, that's a you know, it was pretty easy games the, the call right there. So I hit there and I hit my college games last week. So oh yeah, cause uh, we, we giving you the info right here. Yeah, cause a cause a game that that I pick for free. He probably pick different if his money was online. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't picking I, the Cowboys. I, hey, I tell you that. Hey, come on now. I tell you that. I'm about that. to quit picking them for free. <laughs> But yeah, man, yeah. so we're going to run through this thing real quick, man. So my boys know the Dame, man. Got, you know, they, they rolling right now, looking real good. Defense is rolling right now. They take on a very tough Georgia Tech team right now. That we, uh, I mean, they might not be that tough. Florida State losing to everybody. But, All right. um, yeah, who you got in this game, Mo? Uh, Florida State, Georgia Tech? No, no, the Dame, Georgia Tech. Oh, no, the Dame. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia Tech beat uh Who did they beat early in the year? I'm going to take Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Coach seemed like he didn't kind of figure it out a little bit too, because at first he was trying to <laughs> throw the ball, make him Mon- Joe Montana. No, 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 no. That's not what he was doing. What was that? He was trying to be different than uh, Yogi. Yeah. See, see, because this what this is what people don't understand about Yogi. Yogi the bear don't say I'm the smartest bear. He said I'm smarter than the average bear. Yeah. Yeah. He was trying to be the smartest bear. Yeah. Just be smarter than the average smarter bear. Than average. Be, yeah. Be so he, than the he don't pull back on some of that creativity, I call it. He started trying to, he thinking that the X and O's is better than the Billies and the Joes. <laughs> and he realized, let me. We got uh, some pretty good Billies and Joes over yeah, here. Yeah. So, so let's cut down on some of these hey, X's man. and O's. Shout out Brian Erlacher, son, man. Little, little Erlacher going off for us at Notre Dame right now. Oh, little Er? Oh, we got, I told you we got plenty of Didn't sons you? of sons on the squad. We got better son. We got Ryan Clark son. We got Gerard, Gerard sons Better's of son? sons. Yeah. Jerome oh, Better son. Yeah. We got Ryan sons Clark. of sons. Yeah. Hey, you know what I found out about the other day? I didn't even know Ryan Clark went to LSU. Yeah. I didn't even know that, man. Yeah, he was yeah. a dog out there. Yeah, I know. He was a dog at Pittsburgh, but, yeah. I, didn't, yeah. but I didn't even know. You know. He just went undrafted for whatever reason. But um, Or got drafted late, one of the two. I forget what it was. Late, he didn't, he didn't late, get that late. bonus. Yeah, yeah, he got drafted late. Got drafted late. But, he didn't get that big yeah. off the off the bat. Oof. Next game, we got CU versus Arizona. Woo! It's a good one right here. They had a, they had a good game last year. I'll say that much. That tells you anything about I'm gonna what I'm going to say this. Arizona, I mean, Colorado a lot better. I'm, I'm pick Colorado. Exactly. Colorado a lot better than it was last exactly. year. Exactly. They're way a... different. Now, they got some people hurt. Yeah. They got some people hurt. Yeah. But now, nah, Travis Hunter and Jimmy Owen, they're coming back. Oh, okay. Okay. Deion okay. said they'll be playing this weekend. He okay. said that yesterday. Made that announcement. Now, Amari okay. Miller's done for the season, man, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, well, Travis, well, Travis Hunter and Jimmy Owen will be I'm, back. I'm going to uh, say Colorado because Colorado is a... Uh, Way better team than it was last year. And then all got to do with the line of scrimmage. They got a better O line and a better deep. Even though they got ran on last year, if that would have been that line last year, they might have set a record. Yeah. You know I, I think that D line's yeah. going to play a lot better this yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the O line is going to play better. It's, it's, it's pretty solid because they're young. Freshman, what's his name? Seaton, whatever his name is. Jordan Seaton, yeah. Yeah, Seaton, man, that, that dude is becoming a, a, oh, that's, a real player. That's why man. he was number one in the nation coming yeah, out of high yeah, school. I, I mean, so and then the not only the kids are is he uh, – He's mean with it. Is, too. He, is he is he playing hard himself? He's he's holding his teammates, teammates accountable. accountable. Hey absolutely. man, come on. Yeah. Let's the, go. the young buck doing yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I, I just um I dread I hope Shiloh comes out and plays much better this week and is more sure about his tackling uh and just his, you know, responsibilities. Uh he gotta get that hit gang CEO, you know, and I'll mindset. Say this, uh, no, you gotta be what Colorado needs you to be on Saturday. Absolutely. Get everything else. And I don't think Arizona uh Skill position player is quite what K State skill position players are. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Now, Arizona got a good solid D. But you know, this is this is a whole thing that I don't like a lot of these kids play because they're in position is the skill. Yeah, you know. But I'm saying when they say skill position, the you know, DBs on, the, on the offense, I think running back that, receivers. Uh, yeah, wide receivers and running backs. Yeah, especially offensive skill players are yeah. better than Arizona's. I'm saying like that. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. No, this is this is just what I think. Colorado. I think their offensive skill positions have been better than just about everybody. No, I'm talking about uh, Kansas K State skill oh, yeah. position oh, offensive yeah, yeah, players yeah, 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 are better yeah. than Arizona. Arizona yeah. got a good solid, more of a solid all around team. Yeah. K State got some dudes that can give you the business on. Offense. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, Arizona's gonna come man. with some big boys in yeah. that O line. They're gonna come with some big boys in that D line and a couple solid oh, linebackers. Yeah. And uh, I don't, you know, running back usually pretty decent, but you know, other than that, I don't, and, I don't, I don't know too many other positions coming up out of there like that. And but, the next question is, who you think who you got in this game? 
No, who you got in Colorado or Arizona? You got Colorado? Oh, Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, I got, I got Colorado oh, on that I'm game too. Yeah, man. yeah. I'm just saying all that other stuff. Ooh. Georgia Bulldogs versus them Hook'em Horns from Texas. You got UT? You wearing the color. I'm with you too. Hey, we hey, Longhorns see, over here all day. That's going to be a great I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to say yeah, that do. I send I, no I agree, boys trip. to UT, I agree, but I sure encourage a lot of boys from, from Dallas Carter to go to UT. I'm not yeah. going to say them. Say that I said about say man, go on down there. Yeah. You got uh Bruce Chambers, which which played D B at Carter and ran track. He was up on the Mac Brown, so he was recruit he was recruiting the Dallas area. I'm like, man, you got the Dallas dude down there. Yeah. You know, I ain't gonna say I sent him down there, but I sure encourage them to to go. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure, man. Now UT is what that is. I'm I'm picking yeah. them over Georgia this week, oh, yeah. man. Not an upset to me. I feel like Texas is the deepest team. They're very disciplined. Uh Sarkeesian has completely changed my whole mind about him Me in too. a very short time. Me too. I was, first, I was I wasn't like, excited what about the for? hire. I, uh, I was either. like, why are we just, you know, repeating something that these other so Texas, I live in Texas, Dallas, Texas. Notre Dame is my favorite team in all the sports. But other outside of Notre Dame, I'm I'm hooking horns all day long. Oh, I'm like, UT all that's day. That's what it is. And I'm, I'm UT you know, all day, every day. And MC was on the show and I learned a lot about OU. So I respect OU to a whole nother level. Yeah. I didn't know that much history came out of there. So I respect OU a ton. I actually like OU and I root for OU now, whereas I didn't do that before. You know what I'm saying? But and, and shout out, we're gonna have Tommy Harris on the show. Oh, as soon as I hit him up my as well. Favorite team, you know, next to, yeah. to next to UT. Yeah. Because you know, because UT, I mean because OU. Build all their national championship teams with dudes from Texas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Billy Sims. Yeah. You know, Greg Pruitt, go all the way back. Joe Washington. Adrian name, Peterson. And, 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 <laughs> all, 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 all of us in Watt. Yeah. All them boys. Heisman Watt, Trophy so, boys. Yeah, Kyle all Murray. them boys, like, man. Yeah, they they sure, all man. came from Texas, man. That's yeah, a lot of Texans so, up there. So, you know, I, I mess with them now. Yeah, I mess, I mess with, with you yeah, next to then, Texas. And then last game, we got SMU versus Stanford. I'm going with them ponies, man. I'm going with them ponies, too. The ponies don't surprise me. Yeah. This year. Hey, I don't know why. They got that bread in D-Town, man. That NIL ain't nothing but a thing, dog. We guarantee all the athletes at least $36,000 outside their scholarship. Hey. Plus what they, what they want to get out that NIL because we got plenty of it around here. Because SMU got that paper. That paper. <laughs> Big, that they, Bush money. They got they got alumni, yeah, been man. governors, senators, hey. Hey. all kinds of. Hey, they, hey, they, they, they ain't put us on the death sentence for no reason now. Yeah, now, I root for the SMU Mustangs, too, because that's D-Town. And you know, then Eric Dallas, Dickerson. Baby. And then, you know, Eric Dickerson, D-town, Craig Jane. Baby. You know, Eric Dickerson, Craig Jane, Rod Jones, all yeah. them dudes, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'd rather chuck me against Rod Jones after he called Bo Jackson. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Deion, yeah. Deion Sanders Jr.? No, Rod Jones, yeah, yeah. He wasn't no Deion Sanders Jr. No, I'm saying but he went to SMU, though. Deion yeah, Sanders yeah, Jr. Yeah, he went was to SMU. He and he the one called, called Rod Jones. And I, just, I mean, called Bo Jackson. And, I, and after I read that chuck me, though, uh, against him, I said you called Bo, called Bo Jackson, but you couldn't catch me. <laughs> so you you say you got Bo Jackson beat is what you're saying? Man, Bo Jackson ain't ran no three nine four one whatever. The only person ever said that is Bo Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't never heard nobody else say we clocked him at no four one. Him or Deion Sanders, they yeah. don't want to say. Hey, that. but Bullet Bob Hayes did go back oh, and yeah. check out that man, uh, man, that ring on Bullet Bob Hayes. Go man. check out Bullet Bob Hayes, yeah. and they said that. Uh, and when I was doing my research on Bob Hayes, they said we don't have no forty time on Bob Hayes. Yeah. But Bob Hayes ran the football forty and beat Cliff Branch and everybody else who ran. He did it for two years and never lost a forty. So I don't know why they and he didn't run no four two and no four one. Yeah. yeah. All, the, all he ran was four three nine, four four flat, and four four one. And he beat everybody in the NFL during that time. Boy has speed, unlike the Dallas Cowboys of today. Oh Lord, we ain't gonna Oh, oh, we got to talk, oh, talk about it now. So, it. Sunday. And hey, guys, if you would have heard the show earlier in the season, I already said the Cowboys, I predict them to win six or seven games this year. You know, I said this before the season started. So the look on my face, I look like a Dallas Cowboys fan that had proper expectations. I'm not mad. Oh, I ain't mad. I expected this. Oh. So, well, you know, this the Lions thing. came through and devoured the Cowboys. Well, you know, this is the whole thing. I didn't. I haven't expected much from Dallas for a few years now, and they have um, reached. <laughs> Hold on, Trip. Trip say, "Oh, here we go with the Bo Jackson slander." <laughs> oh, the Bo Jackson scandal. No, he said slander. Oh no, no, no! That's just a fact. That's a fact, Trip. You hey, go I'm find me Bo some. Jackson, bro. Hey, That's my guy. hey, I'm gonna tell you this, Trip. I used to watch all. Stars. While we talking, 
Go back and look at the <laughs> University of Oregon playing the University of Texas in the Cotton Bowl. I can't remember exactly what you Auburn, were. University of Auburn? University of Auburn. Yeah. Played the University of Texas in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. And Bo Jackson stood on the sideline with his uniform and uh, helmet on the whole second half after Texas knocked their pork into his butt. <laughs> He was standing over there like he had pork. See, Unc saw all I'm this say, stuff. Texas knocked the ditty into that man. He Joe did because he didn't. <laughs> he didn't look like he had beef. He looked like he had pork. But but we ain't here to talk about Bo Jackson right now. Trip. I'm yeah, just telling hey, you, uh, Unc saw all this stuff with his own eyes. Yeah, I ain't making it up. Go Google it. It is what it is. It's it is. out there. Hit it's that YouTube, out. dog. Hit hey, go YouTube. YouTube and Google it. But anyway, he say back Dak, to So he say, Dak doesn't see the open guys. He stares down, cry baby lamb, and doesn't scan the field. I watched the tape. Exactly. Who was that? Tripp said that? Tripp said it was at a black and white game uh, <laughs> between Auburn and uh, UT. Oh, it don't no, matter it, when hey, it, was. No, it was. It say, was, it was, it was hey, vintage, Tripp. It was Tripp. vintage camera. Tripp, this is the whole yeah. thing. It don't matter when it was. That didn't. That don't mean it didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, no, it wasn't. It wasn't black and white. No, that hey, Trip, I've been around a long real, time. It looked real seen dingy. A, I've seen a lot of stuff. So when these dudes start talking about. All that stuff, I don't know hey. the real deal on you. Hey, that, mug, anyway. that mug was on film, dog. Hey, that's on film. Go look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. man, they are ridiculous. Yeah, man. I mean, look. But this is what they I told. Who I thought they are. Me too. But this whole thing, I thought whatever. because the, because the game because they got four twelve ones uh, win season on the Mike McCarthy, and I said at the beginning of the year, I said they might win eleven twelve games, and that was because. That's what they've been doing, but but now that but this is the thing. See, though. I was looking at, but the, no, no, but I'm, this is the thing. I, I tell you what, I was I, looking at. I, oh, oh, I look at their players all the time, each individual player, and I said this at the beginning of the year, Ja, that I would not give not one Dallas Cowboy player top money at their position. Yeah, See, I wouldn't give CD top money. I wouldn't give Dak top money. I wouldn't give Michael Parsons type money. And I sure wouldn't give Diggs type money after his performance the other day. Did you see Diggs run away? Trip, did you see him run away from two or three? One, the guy was still on his feet. They were they were closing in on it. But but Diggs turned and ran away, turned his back to the tackle so he wouldn't be involved in the contact. And then one other time he backed up and made sure somebody else made the tackle. Wow, so he was just basically sounds like Diggs. He don't like contact. Yeah, sounds, and you're in the wrong sport if you don't like, like contact. Only thing he was doing was, was collecting his check, ma- making sure that he was containing Healthy for this week, containing the outside. He was no, making sure no, he was no. making sure dude, dude didn't get outside of his shoulder, so that his teammates he was come making and make sure a tackle. that he didn't get no where, contact. Where he could have made the tackle, he yeah, wasn't doing it, but he was just not, containing. What he did was he, made sure that he didn't get no he, contact. He was making business decisions, and this is what I've been telling people about Diggs. Trip say that was embarrassing. Diggs looked crazy. Did, you saw it in your trip. You saw him turn his back and run like this here, yeah. away from the hit. Yeah. And this is what I said two years ago about Diggs. If he ain't getting the interceptions, he's an average quarterback. So this is the thing right here as well. He's um, average. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You can point to other players on the field. None of oh, them, oh, touch, is, none of them touch the ball every play. Hey. All right. So and, and, and Dak, like, if y'all want to go check out, we've done over a hundred shows, and over a hundred shows, I've been complaining about the same things with Dak. I've been talking about how sorry Dak is for five seasons now, at least four. Just telling people Dak is not that guy. Dak is not that dude. I know what I see. Yeah, he's got 12 wins, but I know what I see. Yeah, he's throwing for 350 yards, but I know what I see. Like, it's all garbage time yards. People are starting to catch up finally. Again, I saw this a long time ago. People been hating on me. Talking about, are you hating on Dak? Like, no, I want to win. I want to win. And that quarterback right there is not going to do it when we need it. I want to win championships. I don't care about winning in a bank account. I don't care about being a, a hundred, ten billion dollar team. I don't care. I want to win on the field. I want to win Super Bowls again, like we did in the nineties when Jimmy Johnson was calling the shots. Yeah, yeah. And and that ugly head just rid itself again with Jerry Jones in that phone interview yesterday, showing that he has not changed one feather. He has not changed one stripe, one dot. Jerry Jones is who he is, and he wants to control the narrative. He doesn't want the truth. He's got yes men around him. He don't want the truth about how crappy of a team he's just spent 
400, 500 million dollars on. He's, his job is to sell tickets and, and sell experiences. Jerry's going to make more money selling experiences at the stadium and around the stadium than he is off people coming to the stadium in the next five years if this continues. That's why he's worth $10 billion. Like, because it, it, he's worth 10. The Cowboys are, for whatever reason. Yeah. And this but is they're, the brand, they're branded alongside this IndyCar this event. Like, thing, that's J-A. how the Cowboys are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, everything the team starts, is trash. Everything starts at the top. And I know we're missing. I know we missing Micah. I know we missing D Law. They weren't doing squat when they were here. They weren't. But you know we got. Uh, uh, and I give. I'm not. Again, I'm not putting as much responsibility on this new defense as other people are. We got a brand new defense. They six games in. It is what it is. They still learning that we were trash in Dan Quinn's first season here, but that second season. We figured it out. We knew the language. We communicated better. By the end of that first season with Dan Quinn, we were playing a much better as a defense. We weren't looking like this, though. Oh, yeah, we we were. At at the beginning, we absolutely were. But by the end, they had started figuring it out. And I feel that this defense is going to get better, right? They're going to figure it out, hopefully. But at the same time, I also think that it's a locker room situation going on. We got a lot of decent athletes in the building that – that want their check as well. But we see this one guy that is very average or below average getting paid more than anybody else in the NFL. CeeDee Lamb is a top 10 receiver, no matter how you want to slice it up. Dak Prescott has nothing top 10 about him. And this is what I've been saying for the past five years. What does Dak do well? Nobody can answer that question. Nobody. He like Tripp say, he stares down receivers. I've been complaining about that. He holds the ball too long. He's not accurate once he lets it go. He doesn't audible out of plays. He doesn't call the proper audibles. He doesn't call hot routes. He doesn't get up and recognize something, give it a sign. Hey, a whole play to change. Uh, let's get like he doesn't do any of that. He's a robot. He needs a remote controller. So as a coach. As a coach, can you can you do anything about that? Can you do it? First well, off, what you could have done was what, what I thought you they could, were doing was you not could, sign him for four years. What you could have done is had your team prepared to play because I have seen the Cowboys come out three or four times this year and look absolutely not prepared to play. Dak Prescott is not that. That part ain't his fault. Did the Cowboys look prepared to play to you? No. Let me talk for a while because you've been talking. Well, well Tom da- Brady. Tom Dallas, Brady. Dallas' problem Watch is Jerry him. Jones. Wait a minute. Let me talk. Yeah. Because I didn't say nothing while you were talking. Yeah. Dallas' problem is Jerry Jones. <laughs> Jerry Jones <laughs> worth $10 billion. He don't, he don't give a damn. Because if you heard him on 105 The Fan, when he told them guys, y'all not saying what I want to hear. I'll get, he told them I'll come after your job. Mm-hmm. And they told Jerry, you don't sign our checks. We work for the station. You know what I'm saying? Because they not saying yes. Jerry got Jerry got the Cowboys worth ten billion. He don't give a damn. Everything started at the top. Dak Prescott got his two hundred million. He don't give a damn. C.D. Lamb got his hundred million. He don't give a damn. Yeah. Uh, 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 Diggs got his ninety million. He don't give a damn. So everybody's taking the clue from Jerry. Get your money and 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 I and and I laugh it off. Because right after the game, Jerry was laughing and smiling so hard. It's his birthday, like, too, man, your team, I don't give a damn about your birthday. You right. You right. You right, huh? We talking about game. You going to celebrate your birthday tonight. But the game you let. Oh, well, no, I have no no intention, no thought of tra- The coach had them not prepared to play. The players didn't play worth two dead flies smashed together. The owner, the, the owner and general manager... They had the worst offseason ever. So it starts at the top. Yeah, it does. Jerry Jones is the problem. Mike McCarthy is the next problem. Dak Prescott is the next problem. Absolutely. He's he the is. third problem. Yes, he is. We got two problems bigger than Dak Prescott. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's that, just me. As far as the play on the field, Jerry ain't through a pick. He ain't done none of that. Jerry ain't shoot. You're absolutely right. Jerry ain't, ain't let nobody. Sack. Jerry ain't let nobody score six times in a row like the defense did. The first six or seven carries. That uh, the first uh, six or seven uh, 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 possessions, 
they went for a score. Did Jerry didn't do none of that, but they took their cue from Jerry because yeah. they don't give a damn. Yeah. They just want their money. Yeah. Everybody on the Cowboy player is taking the players. Everybody's taking. I their mean, cue. they they see you don't got to earn it when, no, when you give Dak exactly. two hundred and forty million. They see you don't got to earn it. They you know say the same way you gave uh, uh, Diggs ninety million and he running away from tackles. He didn't earn it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. CD sitting on the ground kicking like a little girl up in up in up, up in Kroger yeah. didn't that didn't get a bottle. Man, you know all that stuff, man. I, I'm, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say this as nice a way as I can. Yeah, Dallas Cowboy players. Let me let me figure out what, how I'm gonna say this. Dallas Cowboy players are soft in their undergarments. Yeah. I'm going to say it like that. Yeah. And yeah. every athlete know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They soft in their undergarments, man. Come on, man. They ain't got nothing down there. They ain't got nothing down there. It's empty. Man, <laughs> you know? I mean, that's Come what on, it man. seems like. That's what it seems like. They got, they got, because, because, you know, some people is, got. This is three times in a row we've gotten blown out at home going back to the playoffs. No, four times. Because they four now? Three, game, three games at home this yeah, year. Yeah, you're right. The playoffs. Four times in a row. We got Green Bay, New Orleans, Baltimore, and now Detroit came over here. They yeah, got beat linemen the scoring. Like, they didn't even care. They beat the brakes like, they off were going Dallas, in because, And they, they went in because they got cheated out of the game last year. And Dan Campbell, that dude don't care about your life. I like that dude. Oh, I like that. All he cares about too. is winning. Yeah. All he cares about oh, is winning. Really? So, And man, that's was, why he would never coach for Dallas because he got to do what Jerry say do. Yeah. And, and, and shout out Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson. Um, yeah, man. That's, yeah, man, that's, we love y'all, horrible, man. And, uh, that was a horrible, every, horrible break, man. Horrible, horrible. Yeah, man, let me go back, man. Let me shout out everybody, man. Appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Definitely appreciate you. Uh, Tarantulas Football, man. Justin D. Uh, let me see. We're going through this thing. Timothy Reddick. Uh, catch em, catch em's. LL Katie. Man, appreciate you all tuning in, man. Hey, if y'all get a chance, man, go ahead and go hit that subscribe button, man. Hit that notification Just bell, that like reason, button. Man. It helps it. us out. A ton, man. We love doing this every Wednesday. Just giving our raw opinions, man. Nobody controls us. We control ourselves. So we can say the truth out here. Yeah, you know I mean, what I'm saying? We can say the truth out here because I guess what? Don't nobody. Hey, Jerry can't make me say yes. Yeah. He ain't, know, got, enough, he ain't got enough money. I don't care if he is a billionaire. He ain't got enough money to make it. I'm Period. Saying that. Period, Cause, cause man. If, you, if you're wrong, I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, man. Period, man. You might, so, lose, you might lose a little money with it, but... <laughs> So, you look, about switching over, man, you know, we're passionate about that cowboy talk because, I mean, you know, it is oh, yeah, what it is, man. About that. So, uh, hey, ho matter, and hope y'all got your, uh, your, 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 your whiskeys. Hope y'all got your whiskeys uh, available, man, and y'all sipping with us right now. Uh, you know, we just, we just enjoying the show, man. Oh, snap, boy. God, dog. I done dropped ice. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pick that up. Oh. I'm out. Nah, man, but we always uh we on here trying to have a little fun, man. Have this whole fun. thing. Even though this is the whole thing, man. I'm passionate about this stuff, but I ain't too passionate because none of these none of these Jerry and none of these people, man, uh when I look on my uh tax roll and all that stuff, yeah. I don't see none of these people. They ain't got nothing for you? <laughs> they ain't got nothing for me. I'm just telling it. That's why I can tell it, tell it, tell the truth on mm -hmm. because um uh, been going to Dallas Cowboy games ever since they've been to Dallas Cowboy, and I can I will always tell you to tell you the truth. And right now, this is the one of the worst Cowboys team I have seen in the history it's of the bad. Cowboys because this is what makes them so it's terrible, bad, real bad. Is that they actually do have some some talent? Yeah, yeah, and that's they the thing. Do have some talent? They do. They do, yeah. but it's just not being leveraged properly. Yeah, not being taught correctly and developed correctly. Yeah, not being coached up. Not being GM'd up. Yeah. None of that. Yeah, so, you know, what we could do, do is go and sign Aaron Donald, try to uh, convince him to get out of retirement. That would be great. Uh, we could go get some free agents, but other things are taking place since we're not making moves in free agency currently. Uh, you know what? I don't think nobody really want to come here because they know the coach going to have to do what Jerry State instead of coach them like they should be coached. I don't, I don't even know. I, 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 I mean, I'm just saying, nobody's coming here. There's got to be a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's coming here. I and the people that news. do want to come, Jerry won't talk to them. So, as far as trades are concerned, I meant trades. I said free agency. I was tired, obviously. But uh, trade deadline, right? So, yesterday, Devontae Adams goes to the Jets. Absolutely. How you feel about that? You think that was a good move oh, or bad feel, move? Oh, that's a, that's a good good move for Devontae because this is the whole thing. 
Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback. You know, and uh, but he can't win by himself. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and uh, and he's got another guy. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers has had every receiver that he has played with that that had they saw work they saw went to the Pro Bowl. I no doubt. And, uh, and and Devontae Adams is very talented, and uh, he's gonna have some good numbers and all that, but they just ain't gonna win. I mean, you know, everybody so, like Aaron Rodgers is gonna take them to the Super Bowl, but he ain't got but one out of 13, 14 years. That's what I'm gonna go by. And I'm going to say this. So, last time we saw them play against each other, they lost 13-10 to 10 to the San Francisco 49ers oh, yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. I don't see what the excitement's about. Because if they were that good, they'd have scored more than 10 points in that game. Absolutely, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So, and now they're going into a stadium where we saw how the wind was affecting the field goals the other night when Zerline was kicking and couldn't get one in and kept hitting the upright. Come playoff time, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to be what that is in that stadium. Well, you know, he played in Green Bay. Green Bay or, got some horrible weather. Or, or later in the season. But yeah, like I said, they lost at home to San yeah. Francisco. Yeah. 13 to 10. Is Aaron Rodgers' teammates ain't what they was in Green Bay either. Yeah, no doubt. But I'm Aaron just saying. Aaron Rodgers have good teammates down there. They're pretty, Jordan Love did pretty good with them last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they got back. Well, they got some good teams. Jordan Love got some good teammates. I'm just saying. I don't, you know, it's, of and course, Aaron Rodgers up. and Devontae Adams are very dynamic, but it's not like they world beaters, is what oh, I'm yeah. trying to say. Uh, oh, yeah. Like that, well, yeah, with Don, Devontae Adams, that's just going to make them to a seven, eight win team still to five, six. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Merchant, yeah, Zerline looked like trash. Greg the Leg was trash when he was here in Dallas, man. So I, I can't believe he still got a job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man, that's 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 for sure. But uh, but now the Jets, their defense is very good. Uh, they, you know, Breeze Hall, and uh, not the not the uh, the young receiver out there, number five. I can't think Wilson, Garrett Wilson. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they got some guys that can go up there right now. You got Alan Lazard. That's another. You got to take your hold. Like you got to have those receivers to be good. Aaron Rodgers, like how good are you, bro? Like, yeah, and then this whole thing. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't like Aaron Rodgers. You don't? He too much like Rick Favre. Mm. He a prima donna. He yeah, won oh, all he this special treatment yeah, and all that. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm just saying, you know. And this whole thing, I don't, you know. And the people that deserve, and the people that should be prima donnas, they don't even act like a Tom Brady could, can be a prima oh, donna. He should be the prima donna, for, prima donna. Way for, but but Aaron Rodgers act more prima donna than, than Tom Brady, man. Yeah, no doubt. Come on, man, stop that. No stop doubt. That. Not you agree with you 100. Yeah, right you know, man. that's what I be talking about. If, if you if you the shiznick, I ain't got no problem with you acting like the yeah, shiznick. Yeah, exactly. But don't act like you the shiznick when you just a shit. Yeah. And, <laughs> you ain't and, got and, no... And, and when you lose, it's everybody else's fault but yours. Yeah, like, yeah That's, yeah, that's yeah, one yeah, thing I don't like yeah, about Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Yeah, oh, yeah. He points, not, he's yeah. quick to point blame on somebody else. Somebody. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's everybody's like fault but him. Yeah. Because he great. I don't, I don't like he's that. great. I don't yeah, like that at all. And, and that's some of Brett Favre stuff, too, just like now. Yeah. Now he just stole all that money. He want to bring up Parkinson's, but that's another story. And then we yeah. got we got Amari Cooper going over to uh, the Buffalo Bills. That could be nice. That's going to be – I'm going to say this. With the quarterback and Buffalo defense, because Buffalo got a solid uh, – who was that? Buffalo lost to – who did they lose to last week? Uh, they won this Kansas week. City? No, it wasn't Kansas City. Was it the Ravens? It was Minnesota. No, no, but no, anyway, no, the, the game that they lost, uh, what was it last? The last game they lost, they 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 looked the Texans. Hot. Yeah, the, yeah, the Texans. But before that, Buffalo looked at fairly solid. Yeah, and with a receiver like, see, cause this is one thing. I ain't Cooper no big Amari open. Cooper fan, but this thing, Amari Cooper is a great route runner. Cooper, he gonna be open. That boy he gonna wide be open. open. He he go and so. And with a quarterback like Josh Allen with a zing on, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, that's oh, going to yeah. be nice. Yeah, I think it's going to help Buffalo. But to say they're going to be Kansas City, that's another story. I think that might have been a better trade. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, they, yeah. Just, they just made a move because Aaron Rodgers and Devontae, they made a, move, they made a chess move with, with, with the Jets in the same conference. Oh, or yeah. the same division or whatever. Oh, so. oh, yeah. And I just think, I'm not saying that Aaron, because me personally, I don't think Amari Cooper is better than Devontae Adams, but I think that he'll have a – a bigger impact because he got better teammates. Yeah, yeah. Because because right now in their career, Josh Allen is probably better than Aaron Rodgers right now. Oh yeah. Now yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. At yeah. this point, yeah. yeah at this point, he's got more juice. I mean, in his, in this is just my opinion. 
that don't make it facts. Yeah, and, for sure. and when we let y'all know this, this all this all this all opinion. Now, when it come to facts, I'll let you know that. Yeah, and we talking physically. You know, Aaron Rodgers got it up here just because of experience, but he can't physically do what he used to do. But yeah. Um. Then you know, Jaden Daniels and Lamar Jackson. We're gonna move on to the NFL talk. Uh, NFL talk from Week Six. Uh, that was a great game. I don't oh, know yeah. if you got a chance oh, to watch that in Baltimore and Washington. Y'all, y'all saw that. Great game. Uh, it lived up to the hype as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Lamar is big bro. You know, he's the he's top dog when it comes to the athletic quarterback in the NFL. But Jaden Daniels as a rookie, Dude, I, that boy learning the curve is real short. He should be big bro. That boy learning the curve real short. He yeah, figured absolutely. it out real quick, man. Absolutely. And, then, and the only knock I got on Lamar's playoff, man. Lamar, you know, like when I... Like when I say Lamar and Dak was the same guy because they both had 12, 13 wins, get to the playoff. Like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, so far as talent, I'm like, come on, man. Don't you, if you think that I think that that's what, that talent is comparable, no. But the results was very comparable. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For and sure. then, and that's, then, uh, I mean, that's, that's and, without a doubt. And, and you know, us that's old guys, we don't care nothing about how you look. How you play? It's all we about just care if you win or lose. That's it. Win That's or it. lose. That's it, man. So, uh, and then uh, Baker Mayfield went out there, got another win this week. Uh, very good game against the Saints, man. They won fifty-one twenty-seven. Spencer Rattler came in, former OU quarterback, former South Carolina quarterback, uh, came in for for New Orleans, and he played well as oh, a rookie. Yeah. Played well, but Baker Mayfield twenty-four for thirty-six, three hundred twenty-five yards, four touchdowns. He had three picks, but he got that dub. But you see. Know? This is the thing that I love about Baker. Yeah. This is what I love about Baker. What's that? Compared to that. Throw three interceptions, but he didn't give a damn. Four he's touchdowns. Like, he's like, okay, pick this one off. Uh, yeah. M effort. Yeah. That's what he <laughs> pick this one off, M effort. Yeah. Touchdown. Yeah. And then he come back, throw interception. Oh, you picked that one, but pick this one. Yeah. See, Dak throw interception. Yeah. Uh, hey, you can slip his shoulder. Baker. Baker what? throw an interception and then he'll stare you down like you got that one, get another one. Yeah. Him effort. I'm still here. I'm here all day. I'm every still day. Here. That's yeah. why I love Baker. Yeah, I love Baker. Baker. See, because this thing, Baker can throw three interceptions. Hey. And he ain't gonna drop his head. He ain't gonna drop his shoulders. What he gonna do is drop a touchdown. But y'all were saying I was crazy for saying that Baker no. Mayfield's better than Dak. No. I was ba- saying that. No, Baker Mayfield is better than Deshaun Watson. And and Dak as well. Because I said that when he left Cleveland, Jay. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know sure. I said, what the hell is Cleveland doing? For sure, man. For you sure, You know, that's man. just my opinion. These ain't facts, people. These absolute. ain't facts. <laughs> yeah, Baker is an absolute dog, too. Yeah, man. Baker, Baker go hard, man, I'm, and I'm, he I'm don't back down. And this is the thing about sports. You got to have a short memory. Yeah. If you throw an interception, so what? It was just one pass. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to say this again, too. Well, and I'm... I'm switching gears real quick to the team that beat Baker, Baker last week. Atlanta. They went out there and beat the Carolina Panthers 38-20. to 20. But I'm telling you this. Kirk Cousins is looking like Peyton Manning more and more every week to me, man. I'm just saying. Man, the only thing from that- the number to the jersey, the way he's wearing his uniform, to his old self can't not being able to really run around no more at all, like, he, he he looked like he's trying to be Peyton Manning. The only problem is he get hurt. Yeah, he does. Because when Kirk Cousins is in there, every team he quarterback go go to the playoffs. Now yeah. when they go to the playoffs, Kirk hurt. Yeah. When he was at Minnesota, hurt. left the playoff, he was hurt. Yeah. And watch the he left the playoff, he was hurt. hurt. Yeah. He, he don't lose in the playoffs. I mean, I ain't saying he don't that lose. He, I'm not saying that he he won't lose in the playoffs. So far, he been hurt. Yeah, so man. I don't know. Yeah. But in the regular season, he leads his team to the playoffs, man. Every time, man. Every Kirk time. Cousins is but, a dog, and he reminds me of Peyton Manning. When you do this with three Manning, different man. teams, sorry. man. When you do this with three different teams, yeah, this ain't no accident. And I, I didn't think this in Minnesota. I ain't think this in Washington. But I now that he's in now, Atlanta. Me personally, I didn't think it <laughs> not <laughs> one old. time that Kirk was going to do what he did. Me but either. he did. Me and either. he convinced me. Hey, and it uh, looks like Looks like uh, my boy in Washington, they, they put him in front of RG3. Wasn't that stupid? No. You know? Hey, and that was that the Gruden? Guy. That was Gruden, brother, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, what, whatever it's John, uh, Not John, the other Gruden. Uh, the, the other, other, the other yeah. whoever it was. Yeah, yeah man. Nah, yeah, man so. He wasn't stupid. He knew what he was doing. At he this did. point, y'all know what time it is. It's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, what was your good, bad, and ugly this week, man, in the NFL? Wait. <laughs> my good was... Uh, 
Baker Mayfield. Yeah. I love Baker. Yeah. You know, Baker throw three hundred seventy, but he throw four touchdowns, three hundred something y'all. He, see, this is the this is this is the thing that that is sports. You can't back down. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and because Uncle's a track and field athlete. So when I ran a really a four hundred meter runner, but I I'm not trying to brag, but I dominated the four hundred so much that I had to get in the one and two to get some competition. Yeah. And when, <laughs> and when <laughs> no, 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 I'm just being honest. Yeah. So so when I ran though. Ran a, a hundred meters and somebody did beat me on a few occasions. I never thought it was them. I always thought it was me. Something that I can do better. Yeah. And that's what I like about Baker is is that he is it's, he always feel like I throw the interception, but I can throw a touchdown. And not only do he feel like that, he do it. Mm-hmm. So that's what make him feel like that. So when so when Baker throw an interception, that's just my good Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Just so, so what's your bad? What's your bad? My bad is. The cowboy coaching. Mm. They come out on the field and they look like they They're not prepared. Not prepared. They look like, you know me, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, Uncle. I keep telling y'all, Uncle is old school, he country, he's sarcastic, and he's seen a lot of great play. So when I see guys come out and coaches look like they not, they Detroit ran a flea flicker and they said oh the coach is so innovative he's so great I was like it's a damn flea flicker mm-hmm. how innovative man they've been running <laughs> flea flicker since I was in the 7th grade hey that was and on Tecmo Bowl when I was now you up. now you in the pros and then they throw a flea flicker and all y'all running one side of the field and then the quarterback get it back and throw the other side all y'all that look like you're unprepared that you have no idea and that's not the first time I've seen Detroit do that this year yeah. myself so if you're a coach and a player and you study in film and you come out and you look like they you don't know what they are doing, that's bad. Yeah. yeah. That, and that goes to the coaching because you look unprepared. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. This is that's that's not okay. That's not okay. Especially when you got, you know, I mean, supposedly you're a Super Bowl. I mean, you got Super Bowl winning coach on the on the on the team, calling the shots head coach in place. Right, so you expect he has and knows what it takes to get there. You don't even know clock manager. Man, it's, it's, the clock it's not okay. It's not it's okay. It's not okay. And so, so what's your ugly, huh? Deeds. Uh, what's his name? Stephon. Steph- uh, uh, Trayvon. Trayvon. Tra- Trayvon Diggs, man. You in football and you're running away from contact. Football, yeah. you know, when I was in high school and all that, I played football and, and, and uh, ran track. Then they said, uh, oh, basketball is a non-contact sport. Yeah. So when I went in the military, I said, I started playing basketball because I could run and jump. Yeah. Not because I could shoot. Yeah. And then I started banging. <laughs> I started banging into people and bam. Dude, six foot five. I'm six two. Bam. 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 Yeah. bam. Yeah. They, yeah. they are wearing me. I'm like, I thought this was non contact. It's so, very, hey, yeah, but this is the whole thing. Stefan, the Trayvon Diggs, I need to tell you that football is a contact sport. I seen you run away from three tackles the other day. The guy was still on their feet. One, you turn your back and ran away. This that was so ugly. Yeah, that's the ugliest thing that a foot. You football is a contact sport. Yeah, you know this going in, yeah. and you avoiding contact. Man, come on, man. Yeah, that was ugly to me. Yeah, that's very ugly. Very, that's very, very ugly. ugly. In NFL, especially on my Dallas Cowboys, man. No. What's I'm going ride down? Y'all down. With you, bro. I'm ride you down. You're tripping. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So my good this week, I gotta take it to Andy. You know, we Flacco, Joe Flacco. <laughs> went out there and got him another win, man. The it Flizzio. Don't, he don't the care Flizzio. what jersey he got on. My boy, all he do is win, man. Joe Flacco up there, man, doing what it do. That's wait my, a minute. Wait a minute. Say that again. He don't care what. He don't care what jersey he got on. All he do is win. So that means he don't care what field he on, was it home or away, right? All way. It don't matter. My boy just win. Indy, Cleveland, Baltimore, those are three of the worst climates. (laughs) Indy and indoor, but that's easy on them, indoors. But yeah, man, Joe Flacco's my good. All that guy guy does is win as a veteran, man. It's quarterback, all these rules, man. These guys can play until they're 45 years old. Oh, yeah. Just be, be in there, you know? Cause they know what to do. They, they've done it. But that's a Super Bowl champion right there. Um, my bad got to be Jacksonville Jaguars. Right? Them boys. 
Hello, I'm Japanese. I love San Diego Padres. Hey, go Padres. Yeah, oh. man. But yeah, the Dodgers, man, they did what it do. They're doing what they're doing right now. Uh, we'll when when now, Tony? Tony, Tony Gwynn. Gwynn. Oh, yeah. Padre, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, see, I told you, see, Hunk ain't necessarily a certain sports fan. He he a fan of greatness. Yeah. Anybody that was good, I don't know about him. Yeah. Care what sport it is. So, yeah. okay. Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the bad is uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, like I said, Trevor Lawrence, man, my God, they got one win on the season. Not looking good. They lost to the Bears. Okay, thirty-five. What was the score to the to the Bears? Uh, thirty-five to. I can't. Even, thirty-five to seventeen. Thirty-five to sixteen. And uh, just not looking good right now for those guys. This is supposed to be a breakout year. He got a big contract, a lot of guaranteed money. What's the nickname? Sunshine. Ah. <laughs> got to do some sunshine. Ah. You got to shine, son. You got to shine, sunshine. You got to shine. No, you got to shine, son. You got to shine, son. Instead of being sunshine, you got to shine, son. Hey, the, the, the moon been up too long in Jacksonville, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, them boys are tripping yeah, out there, man. man. Yeah. They are tripping out there. What up, Kevin? Que- Kevin Ward, yeah. Hey, the Raiders had an ugly one, too, big dog. Appreciate you tuning in, man. Hey, go hit that subscribe button, man. Notification bell, man. Lock in with us, bro. You know, we got memberships too, man. Go on and join. Y'all can hit the super chat. We appreciate it, you know. We, you know, we can make this thing better. You know, if the people want us to get better, we can get better, man. But hey, help support us if we want us to keep coming back. We're going to keep coming back, whether you want us or not. But yeah. Hey, you might have your own one, but we still going to be back. Yeah, man. We we But we want your own. We want your own, so yeah. go hit that subscribe button. Yeah, man, we, we interact with ours over here, man. Appreciate y'all tuning in for sure, man. Shroom Merchant, I see you, big dog. Yeah, man, appreciate all y'all tuning in from Japan. Or, you know, appreciate you tuning in as well. Say from what? From Japan. She says, Say. I'm Japanese. I love the Padres. I don't know the, I can't read the characters, but, man, hey. shout out to you. Appreciate you tuning Say, in. we love the subscribe Padres to too, us, man. man. Yeah, man, I actually, Say, man. So, so go and hit that subscribe button and when we can talk about some things. I was in that Padres but, camp when Bruce Bochy was out there, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, back oh, in yeah, the okay, day. Okay. Back in, what, 2006, 2007, man. Okay, yeah, man. okay. Jay, you know was over there. there. You know in what they, it is. In a spring training in, camp. In Peoria, Arizona. Uh, let me see. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Keep this thing rolling on. So, yeah, and my ugly, of course, the Dallas Cowboys. That's all I got to say. Y'all that's saw the ugliest it. thing ever. It's hideous, man. Y'all surprised. I'm not. I knew they was going to be ugly, so that's, I ain't got nothing else to say about I know they were going to be ugly. I ain't know they were going to be that ugly. And I knew it was going to be bad. You though. know how you go up and, and, you know, you have a blind date. You go pick up and you say, you know, <laughs> they send you a picture. You say, okay, well, I'm going to take out. Yeah. And you go and be like, oh. Nah, I should have left that one that, where it was. That way that is. That's that that's that blind date. <laughs> should have left that one where it, it was. was, man. So, uh, man, looking for this visual real quick. I don't know what happened to the. What happened to the? There it is. What happened to that boy? There it is. There it goes. But um, this week's Bet US NFL Week Seven picks, man. We gonna run through this hot take, hot real jam, quick, real, real fast, quick, man. So we got. First off, we got uh, the Denver Broncos versus the Saints. Who you got, huh? I got Denver. I got Denver as well. Uh, we got the uh, uh, New England Patriots versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over we got New England. I got Jacksonville in this one. You know, <laughs> I, I'm with you. I'm with you right there. Uh, we got the Seahawks versus the Falcons. Who you got, huh? I got the Falcons. I got the Falcons as well. Playing in Atlanta. We got uh, Tennessee Titans versus Buffalo Bills. Who you got in Buffalo? Buffalo, Buffalo as well. Uh, Cincinnati versus the Browns. Who you got, huh? Woo! I'm gonna go with Cincinnati if it's hard. Yeah, to, I'm gonna yeah. go with them Bengals as well, yeah, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I want Deshaun to do. At better, least they got a quarterback. Yeah, he got to show me something. Man, just gonna take a a whim on it. Uh, then we got the Texans versus the Green Bay Packers this week. That's gonna be a good Ooh, game. I gotta go with the Pack. I gotta go with the Pack. Yeah, they in Green Bay. I'm going with the Texans. I'm going with Young CJ. He's a oh, dog. Oh, I'm, I'm going. You ain't going with love. I'm going with Young oh, CJ. I'm, I'm going with a little love. Yeah, you know, had to had to go on the split that one. You know. Uh-huh. Uh, then we got Miami versus Indianapolis. Who you got on? Huh? Indianapolis. Joe Flacco. 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 I'm with you on that. Yes, sir. I'm with Joe Flacco on Indianapolis. Lizzo. Coast. Lizzo. Uh, we got the Detroit Lions. Ooh, this is going to be a good game. And the Minnesota Vikings coming up. Who you got on? Huh? I got Minnesota. Hey, until proven otherwise, I got to take Minnesota in that <laughs> one as well. Yeah, because they're 5 6 and 0. Yeah, they ain't lost yeah. yet. Hey. Yeah, they ain't lost yet. So hey, I, I said it. the only reason they're not 6 0 is because they didn't play this week. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Minnesota looking real good. Uh, another good one San Francisco versus the Chiefs, man. Chiefs and 49ers. Who you got, huh? They ain't never picking against the Trans City until they lose. Pat two, three my homie. They got to start losing. Yeah. You know, one ain't enough. I, I'm with KC in that one as well. Then we got the Commanders and the Panthers taking off. Who you got oh, in that I one? Oh, I got the Commanders. Yeah, I got the Commanders in that one. Young Jalen Daniels is going to do his thing. 
Uh, we got the Rams versus the Raiders. I'm going with the Rams. Ooh. Man, the Raiders look horrible, man. I'm going with the Rams, too. Rams Ram look pretty bad. I'm going what with the Rams, the, too. The Raiders look horrible. Hey, my boy, uh, uh, Dame Lillard, he's a, a Raiders lifer. He done jumped off the ship as soon as they got rid of... <laughs> As soon as I got rid of uh, Adams, and you know, they couldn't do nothing with Adams anyway. So that's a good trade for the Raiders. I'm going with the Rams. Uh, we got the Giants and the Eagles. That's going to be a good game. Saquon going back home to New York. I'm going with the Eagles. I hate the Eagles, man. Man, I do too, but I'm just. Uh, I got to go with them too, though. I can't stand that, man. Yeah. Ooh, wait. This is going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah. With this next game, we got Baltimore versus the Buccaneers, man. Lamar Jackson versus oh, them go. Baker Mayfield. I got to go with Lamar, man. I, I mean, Baker good, but I don't think he's better than Lamar. Yeah. And I think Lamar got a great defense. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go with them. Go with them. Yeah, I'm, I got a... Uh, you got Baltimore. Come on, man. Yeah, I got Baltimore. Yeah, I, I got Baltimore. Until, I know until, until somebody can stop that run, I got Baltimore. Uh, we got the Jets versus Pittsburgh. Who you got in that one, huh? I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? Got you. I got Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh as well. I got Pittsburgh as well, man. And Pittsburgh. Uh, with them, them terrible tiles going ham. Uh, and then we got the Chargers versus the Cardinals. Who you got in this one, man? We got, you know, uh, Justin Herbert versus Kyler Murray. I'm going to go with my heart. I'm going to go with Kyler. I like Kyler. I've mm. been liking Kyler. I know his daddy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, uh, I got to go with Jim Harbaugh in this one, man. I know he had a health scare, but I just think he's a better coach than the oh, guy yeah, across the field from him. Yeah, he went to the tent and then uh, went to the tunnel oh, during okay. the game, oh, you know? Okay. But, uh, but, yeah, man, those are our bet U.S. NFL Week 7 picks, man. Like we said earlier, scan this QR, this QR code here or uh, go over to Bet U.S., man. Go or go over to our uh, YouTube page. Uh, look down at the bottom. You'll see the link to, uh, you know, go to Bet U.S., man, through us, man. So, you know, it's going down, man. This is how, let's, let's get this money together, man. Let's get this money together. But those are our picks for the week. And moving on, that Nunes Fantasy Football League is starting to look real familiar, man. See okay, why? It looking real familiar. See why at the top, Uncle at the bottom. Yeah, see why at the top, <laughs> Uncle at the bottom, man. I'm just trying to get on to participate this year. Uncle told me he was going de- going in this year. Hey, hey, uh, didn't uh, even do it. I, I, I had good intentions, but you know, Uncle, this is the whole thing. Oh, Uncle, Uncle spread kind of thing. He got a lot of, he got a lot, a lot of eyes in the fire. Yeah, and fantasy football is the coldest warning. Yeah. You got to yeah. go with your hot iron. Yeah. I mean, you know, I ain't trying to Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I like fantasy football. Yeah. But no, I've got a lot of stuff no, going I ain't, on. I ain't trying to spread and itself too thin. I'm participating because this is the excuses. whole thing that I want. Because everybody. All I hear is excuses. I don't no, know about no, you, no, Trip. No, no. All I hear is excuses no. right now. But, uh, I'm last. <laughs> I'm last. And that's what that is to see why I first. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no excuses. I'm last. See why I'm first. How about that? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So that? we got now. Nah, Yazerski's actually first. So Anthony Five of my homie. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Then see why second. And then straight cash, homie. Your boy Jay's in third. Dak to the future. Donnie Boaz in fourth. We're all actually tied for second, four and two. Uh, fat ass losers. Jonas is tied for fifth with uh, with Goo Punch and Trip. Uh, Mark is in. Uh, Mark is in that tie as well. At three and three. Uh, Ray Edward Speed Kills is in ninth, and Unk is rounding out the, the bottom. Yeah, bottom. So that's how we're looking in the fantasy football league. Next up, you know what time it is. It's time for Ring the Bell. What's good on? Oh. Ring the Bell. Say, oh. man, let me tell y'all something right now. Before I go to this week, I got to go back a little bit to last week. Yeah. Anyway, Jim Brown, when he retired with 12,312 yards, he retired as a leading rusher in the history of the NFL. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. And I'm going to say this, one more thing about Jim Brown. Jim Brown didn't like Franco Harris. Yeah. Because Franco Harris was the first running back that ran out of bounds on a consistent basis. Yeah. And Jim Brown calls him soft, no kahunas. One more thing about Jim Brown. When Jim Brown was, uh, this is all from last week, because this week, ring the bells on Walter Payton. Jim Brown would, would uh, run the ball, and then when he uh, would uh, stand up, he would walk back to the huddle very slow. And by the time he leaned down in the huddle, that's back when they had the huddles on the circle. When he leaned down, everybody was clapping to come up. But this week, ring the bell is on Walter Sweetness Payton. And this is another guy. He broke Jim Brown's record. And when he retired, he was the leading 
uh, Russia in the NFL history. And you know, Walter Payton came from uh, Jackson State. He played 12 years. And uh, he was drafted in 1975. And Walter Payton did so, so many things that uh, was special. See, because back in back back in the day, a lot of people don't know they had what they call NFL champions versus the college all stars. And Walter Payton, up until this time when he was drafted in 1975, all I did was read about Walter Payton in the paper. And he, and he went to Jackson State where Deion Sanders coached. And uh, all I heard, Walter Payton did this, Walter Payton did that. And I read all this in the paper. But back in the 70s, college all-stars would play the NFL champions. Yeah, in the 70s. And uh, before I, I had heard of Walter Payton, like I said, I read about it. And then in 1975, mm. Walter Payton played in that game, the college all-stars, against the Super Bowl champions. Walter Payton was must-see TV. Wow. When I saw Walter Payton, he he ran the ball from the backfield. He caught balls out of the backfield. He ran punts. He ran kicks. I said, this dude is must-see TV. And where, where was he playing for? Like, what Jackson College? State. Jackson State. That's yeah, that's right. that's right. That's right. That's right. And uh, Walter Payton was must-see TV. I was like, who is this? I was like, everything that I had read in the paper about Walter Payton, oh, Walter Payton is quick, he's swift, he's strong, he's this, he's that. And when I saw him play, he was everything that they said he was and some more. Mm Mm-hmm. Man, that's crazy. And some more. I had his rules. I had his shoes with the little pocket on the side. I used to put my pennies in them. Oh, yeah. And and Walter Payton, when he would run the ball, I got to tell some stories before I even give this. Yeah. So it's statistic. Because like I say, if you didn't see Walter Payton, I can tell you all about it. But I want everybody that's on here right now, go back and Google Walter Payton and, and, and get on YouTube and look up some of his Walter Payton had this little move that he would get on the sideline and he would be running and he would he would he would kick his leg. And a lot of times people thought that he was gonna go out of bounds, but he would veer back into the defender. And drive him, yeah. And drive him. He would kick like, "Oh, I'm going out of bounds." Then he would bam. Then yeah. he would explode into him. And I'm gonna say this: just get him off balance, yeah. Walter Payton gained three or four thousand yards doing that, man. Wow, that's because every time he did that, he would hit the guy, and the guy would go three, four, your five, six, seven yards downfield. Wow. So yeah. all of that running out of bounds that you run, that you see running backs do, that wasn't, yeah, a big thing back then, yeah. And Walter Payton would would do all of that, and he was a special dude. He was 5'10", 205. I mean, back in the day, you didn't run out of bounds. No, no. You better get up field. And I told, and you you, you weren't here when I was talking about it. Jim Brown gave, Franco Harris was the first guy that ran out of bounds Mm. on a consistent basis. Yeah. As a great back. Jim Brown called him soft. We no cojones, no guts, no heart. In the paper? Jim, yeah. Oh no. Oh, my gosh. And, and Jim Brown told him, if you don't like it, then come see me. Wow. That's the kind of dude Jim Brown. Yeah. And, 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 and doing what that time. Because cause Franco Harris was big as Jim Brown or bigger. Yeah. But he ran out of bounds. Jim Brown. Like, and, was Jim Brown was retired at that time, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, so he wasn't he used didn't, to he that. He didn't like that. He didn't like that. He didn't that. like that, yeah. And, you know, and then Walter Payton, what personified that Walter Payton would act like he's going out of bounds. Then he'd explode into you. And drive you, and I, and this is just, just a uh, estimation. But Walter Payton gained over a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand yards, just exploding in the guy, because he did it over and over. And he would drive him five or six, three, four, five yards every time. So if he did it a hundred times, a hundred times, a hundred uh, times ten is a thousand, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. So he did yeah. that over and over. Yeah. And and Walter Payton That's was a dude, and uh, and uh, before I go to his pro career, when he left the NCAA, he was the leading scorer in NCAA history mm. with 464 points. Wow. From Jackson State. Jeez. And that was my first time ever seeing him when he played against That's the, That's the all-star points. players against the NFL because Jackson State, like now you go on cable 
and you go way down to those 100 and 200 channels, you see Jackson State, Bethune, Cook, you see all the HBCUs playing. But in those days, they were not on TV like that. Yeah. 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 And Walter Payton, like I said, he was drafted in 1975. And when he retired from the NFL, he had 16,726 rushing yards. Yeah. He was a leading rusher, and he held it until Emmy Smith broke it. Wow. At that time. And that was what, 20 years later? Yeah. And then, uh, 15 years and later. And then Walter Payton, total yards was 21,803. So he had another. 5,000 yards receiving. Yeah. And where is he, where is he, uh, where is he on that list of total yards? Total yards, I think he's number top, two to top, Jerry. Yeah, okay. Top, 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 top three or four. Mm-hmm. Total yards, I think Jerry Rice up there. Him, Jerry Rice for total yards Crazy. is up there. Yeah. You know, and uh, and uh, Walter Payton was that dude. He was must-see TV. And then. And, and Jerry Nike, Curl too, boy. Yeah, and Don't then. forget about that drip, boy. Had that drip. And hey, then now wet, I read Walter Payton, Walter Payton played 13 years, had 128 touchdowns, and he led the league in rushing five years in a row. Wow. Barry yeah. Sanders didn't do that. No. That, they five were, years in a row. They got oh. one championship out of 85. That's the only championship Yeah, from 19. So yeah, Barry, Barry Sanders got that. And this is the thing. Uh, Mike Dicker. Mm-hmm. But one of his biggest regrets is that he didn't, he didn't get Barry Sanders the ball. I mean, not Barry Sanders. But Walter, Walter Payton, Payton, the ball yeah. in the Super Bowl, he gave it to William D. Refrigerator Perry. Mm, yeah. And Walter Payton, uh, out of all his career, he don't have a touchdown. Wow. And that's Mike Dicker's fault because they were on the one-yard line. And he gave it to Refrigerator Perry instead of Walter Payton. Exactly. That's sickening. Come on, man. That's sickening. Yeah, you know, Refrigerator Perry, I mean, that's some, that's some salesman stuff, man. And like, like I come say, on, you don't do that to that. Not sweetness, man. Yeah, and, and, and you know, Walter Payton was a five foot ten, 200, 205 pounds. That's crazy. Cause he looks the way he runs, he looks so much bigger than that. He runs like he was 6'3, 225. 5'10, 200, 205. And that boy ran hard, man. Hard. I mean, you, and, and 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 he had a, you know, out of the out of his 13 years, he had 128 touchdowns. Like I say, at the time he retired, he had 16 And Walter Payton was more CTV. And, this, and then he had 21,803 total yards. That's yeah. another 5,000 yards. Yeah. Besides his rushing yards. And this is when... A lot of yards, man. This is... This is one of the things that make people think that arm oh, is it's, 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 uh, cynical and all that stuff. When I see Walter Payton, which was a 5'10", 205, 200 pound, was an every down back. He could run the ball. Mm-hmm. He could block. Yeah. Then he had 5,000 yards receiving. And you tell me how good Derrick Henry is. But when I seen him play against Kansas City here on the sideline, Walter Payton would have yeah. never done that. Yeah. Because yeah. he can block on third yeah. down and, and he can catch around. out the back. He's a complete field. football player. He's a football He's a player. He's a football player. So when I tell y'all that Hulk is hard to impress, it's not it's not that I'm trying to down this young guy. But when I see <laughs> all I want somebody is name me one every down back in the NFL right now. Man. Name me one. Uh. I don't care about Derrick Henry run for all of y'all. But if you get in a tight game and you're on a fourth down drive where you got to throw, 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 Derrick Henry is useless. I can't think of any right now. Joe, I mean, I would say Joe Mixon, but. He hurt. Now he's back. He, no, he, he scored last week, but. Yeah. Okay, okay, but I'm just. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, it's yeah, a different day now. I mean, it's I'm, different that's all I'm saying. So when, I, so when I see him sarcastic or think that these young guys ain't all that, I got a reason. Because this is this <laughs> is what I want, want, want. You know, they always tell Saquon me. Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has been. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Has been. You're, You're absolutely right. right. You're right about You're absolutely that. right. That He's the Diddy. only one. But tall, this is tall dude said free Diddy, then Diddy said Barkley. <laughs> but this is the whole thing. Yeah, Saquon, Saquon. You're absolutely right. But this is the whole thing. That's just one, and I'm just yeah. naming Walter Payton. But this is yeah. the thing. Walter was not doing that time. You had you had teams 
that has specialty backs. And do you know one of the first people that has specialty backs? Is Josh Jacobs ever down back? I don't think he's ever no, down back. No. They still got Dylan out there, don't they? No, 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 Josh Jacobs. You know, in, in, in the Packers. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, you know, and not only was it was Walter Payton, you had some, you had some, really it wasn't but one or two teams that had sp- third down backs and all that. Yeah. Do you know the first one that had a third down back? Who? The Dallas Cowboys. Tom London. Really? Who Dan was? Reeves. Oh, wow. Because he had, wow, yeah. he had, he had, he had Dwayne Thomas, Calvin Hill, <laughs> and then he had to uh, come in on third down, I Dan just, Reeves. Dan Reeves, you know, I just remember him coaching. He wasn't playing when I was watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was coaching, yeah. but but he was the first I ain't uh, know back that. to come crazy. in on third down, catch the ball. Definitely know he was so, a running back. Strictly, strictly for catching the ball. How about players. the NFL got two white cornerbacks right now for the first time in like 20 years since Jason Seahorn? That's wild, ain't it? Yeah, I think yeah, that's you pretty know, dope. So, so with that, so with that ring the bell. I'm not trying to down these guys. I'm just trying to let people know that Ark is hard to impress. When I seen people like Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Emmitt Smith, Eric Dickerson, and then and, and then when you start talking about cornerbacks, when I seen uh, Lim Boyne and Mel Riffle and all these guys yeah. that that was shut down corners before all this. So, so you know, all this new talk is just catch phrases, man. Yeah, ain't nothing new under the sun. So, you know, that's that's ring the bell. That's and ring Walter the bell. Payton, hey, a, and if you a... don't believe on, uh, go watch Walter Payton. Go hey, Google man. him. Go YouTube him. Go whatever you need to do. Find out about it. That's ring the bell right there from Unc, man. Appreciate that one, Unc. Walter Payton, that boy was cold-blooded. I played with him on Tecmo Bowl with Willie Gault. You know, and, and, and them boys. Oh, yeah, you and know? them boys. Oh, yeah. And them boys. So, uh, we're going to keep this thing rocking, man. That was great right there, but um, keeping it moving. So on to the WNBA. Uh, I know someone mentioned earlier they wanted to talk about Caitlin Clark, and we absolutely do. We usually do, but there's no reason to talk about her this week. She ain't in the playoffs. She's not in the playoffs. But right? but did you see the stands? The first game she she got eliminated. Yeah, the stands was empty. Yeah, it wasn't looking the same up in there. Was no, it? it wasn't looking the same. It wasn't looking the same, man. And I. Only reason that I know this is because I've done my research. Oh, so, I saw it. Uh, no, the New York Liberty out. versus the Minnesota Lynx. Yeah, man. They had about 3,000 people up in there. Yeah, you know, uh, but they, they're saying it's sold out and all that good stuff, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. But They can say it's sold out, but when I see it on TV and see seat after seat, man, I didn't see nobody. Nobody's, nobody's watching. I saw like about 3,000 people up in a 15, 20,000. See the arena. I'm serious about 3,000. No, nobody's yeah. watching like they were. No, no. And, I mean, it, it's Caitlin Clark. It is what it is. Let's yeah. call it like it is. You know what I'm saying? It's popularity. Huh? It, that's it. It's, it's like everything else. It's popularity. Look at the Kels. They got $100 million because Travis is dating uh, Taylor Swift now. So they got $100 million on their podcast. If the Kelsey brothers didn't have Taylor Swift in the There in wouldn't the mix, be squat. It wouldn't be $100 million. But it is who it is. Popularity. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Kelsey is now in a whole new demographic. So... Whole new demographic want to hear what he say? Hundred million dollar check. Cut the check. Cut the check. Ain't nobody watching WNBA. But we will inform you that the New York Liberty and the Minnesota Lynx are tied one to one. Game three is tonight. You know, I tune in. There's some great players in there. Father, who you who you got? Who you got? Minnesota or New York? I got New York. Yeah, I do too. I got New York. Man, New York got a, quite a few championships, man. Yeah, they do. They do. But you know, the Aces, they, they put the Aces out. So yeah, I, that's I, why I, I got New York. You know, and they got Inescu and uh, Brianna Stewart, and you know, they got more players on that team. So I got New York. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Trip, Trip, are you watching? The, are you watching the WNBA playoffs, bro? I mean, you tell me. You seem disappointed that, that we ain't watching right now because Caitlin ain't in there. It is what it is, man. Oh, yeah, that's, what, that's what she brings to the table. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I might tune in and watch it. Yeah. Go say he got the Lynx. You know, Lynx got a good squad. Hey. But you know what, Caitlin Clark beat both of them this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, the Indiana Fever. Yeah, the Indiana Fever. Yeah. Until, they, until they counted the most this year. They yeah. Did. They, yeah, they didn't beat the they did not beat the Aces though. They didn't yeah. beat Asia, but they beat everybody else. But uh, keeping it moving because there really wasn't much to talk about there. We got the uh, MLB. Put that on you right quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got MLB playoffs going. A lot like you know WNBA without Caitlin Clark. MLB has done a horrible job of marketing and keeping people interested in the games. And I love baseball. Like, baseball is my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, we got the the Dodgers and the Mets, which is a, a very old school battle, right? Actually, it's like 
kind of like the Ravens and the Colts, right? When the, when the Dodgers went over to LA from New York, uh, from Brooklyn, uh, the Mets became a team. So it's like they're playing the old version of themselves. But the Mets, man, they started off very slow this season, not making any any type of buzz. But them boys, that second half uh, of the year caught fire. Uh, but I think the Dodgers have too much firepower uh, on that mound for them right now. It'll be it'll be very dope to see a Mets versus Yankees World Series. Uh, I don't see that happening uh, just because the Dodgers are what that is, you know, and their best pitcher ain't even pitching. Uh, Shohei's hitting bombs this year and setting 50 55 records and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, uh, Dodgers are a very exciting team. They got Muchos arms coming out of the bullpen, coming out the rotation. Uh, they got bats for days. A uh, very strong team out there in LA right now. Uh, I was surprised to see that the San Diego Padres had them down the way they did uh, early in that last series, but uh, you know, Dodgers pulled it on out, man. So, that's gonna be an exciting series, man, because New York ain't nothing to play with. Francisco Lindor, uh, he's one of the you know. He's a great shortstop. One of the best shortstops I've seen probably since uh, Omar Vizquel. Like, the guy, friend Lindor, is solid with that leather, and he can swing that stick, man. Uh, and for power, surprisingly, a little more this year. So, uh, And then that Cleveland and New York series, I'll be honest, man, I don't know much about the Guardians. Uh, I know typically they got some arms in that rotation uh, and, and some coming out of that bullpen, um, but I don't know much about them. I know that Ramirez is still there, uh, the second baseman. No, that, that's really all I really know. I, I don't even know if he's still there, honestly. But I don't know much about Cleveland. But they made it to the to, to deep in the playoffs. Uh, the Yankees, they got so much firepower. Can those bats turn on at the same time? Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, uh, Aaron Judge. I mean, we what's my boy that got traded from the Marlins that's up there wearing the, the Gotham City green? Uh, we got Juan Soto out there. I mean, the, the Yankees have no reason to not be – in the MLB uh, championship, right? Uh, the World Series. Like, there's no reason they shouldn't they shouldn't make it to the World Series this year based off talent alone. But we shall see. It is New York. Um, it's been tough sledding, you know, uh, getting to those you know, World Series championship games has not been um, very easy for them as of recent years. This ain't the late 90s, where it seems like they was going annually. Uh, but it'll be great to see them, man. It'll be great to see the Yankees back in the World Series. It's been a drop. Uh, not as long as the Cowboys, but it's been a drought for the Yankees for sure, man. But that's it. We got that's all we have for the uh, MLB right now. Uh, a little news. I think we kind of briefly discussed it last week. Uh, NBA news, man. Seth Marshall is stepping down uh, as the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, she's retiring at the end of the year. Uh, so just wanted to give her a proper send off. Kudos, hats off. Job well done to you, Seth Marshall. Um, brought the Mavericks to help bring the Mavericks a hot dog on championship so uh, we've been to the playoffs for a few years actually I don't think she was here during that time but I've been to the playoffs for the past few years man you, you've done an excellent job with the organization marketing everything else that the organization is doing helping with that so kudos to you on that uh, Sam Marshall we're gonna miss you here in Dallas absolutely appreciate your service that you provided over the years for the Mavericks moving on moving on Okay, y'all right on the MLB playoff. Boxing new. The S is behind Mike Tyson. So this past weekend, we had Dimitri Bivol take on Arthur Bitterbeer for the light heavyweight undisputed championship title, right? So they both had belts coming in. Uh, there's a lot of people saying that there was a robbery that took place. Yeah. Um, I felt like Bevo put them hands on him consistently throughout the entire fight. Uh, I feel that those judges had a lot to do with this robbery taking place. Um, but, uh, what do you think about that fight? Man, that's why boxing got a black eye right now. Because I done looked at so many fights. You know, and I'm, I'm no... I'm no boxing judge. But when I see two guys fight, and this guy hit this guy 25 times, and he hit him two... Pretty much every round, he yeah. got him 25, and then he lose. I'm like, this didn't make no sense, right? Yeah, and just like that fight, it didn't make no sense. That's Bevo's first loss. Meanwhile, Canelo Alvarez said he didn't want no more Bevo. But as soon as this fight finishes, he hits up Bitter Bev talking about, what's good? Let's get it for these belts. Like, Canelo, you don't want none of that smoke, bro. 
like Bivol gave you the business all the way. Maybe you do want some of that smoke because you see that Bitter B, if he's not as active, he's not throwing hands, he's not as busy as Bivol was. I felt like Bivol won that fight. Oh, I do too. He got hit with some shots, yes. But I think he threw a lot more than what Bitter BF did. Right? Uh, Bitter BF has got more power. Bivol has not, you know, he's like he's like the Shakur Stevenson of light heavyweights. Yeah. Yes. He's not going to knock you out, but he's going to touch you a whole lot. You know? And uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the boxing fans don't want to see that. Yeah, we're tired of seeing that. We're tired of seeing all that dancing and, you know, going around and around. And then then uh, you throw the pillow hands three or four times and then you win the fight. Yeah, people yeah, are man. tired of that, man. And that's, 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 that's why so, boxing losing popularity. I, I think I gave Shakur a little bit too much credit right there because Bevo don't run. Yeah, he oh, stays. Man. He stays in there. That what I was doubt you said. I didn't say nothing, but I looked at you like, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I'm just saying from the pillow hands aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he's not knocking you out, but he's gonna touch your whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bivol don't run. Sometimes he stands Shakur in front of you. dance six, seven rounds before you even start throwing Absolutely. pillow hands. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just and that's just not good. Yeah, yeah, man. So, you know, we'll see what's up, man. In this one, man. Um, I just don't. I. I We'll see what happens, man. I think there's going to be a rematch. I'm pretty positive there's going to be a rematch. Uh, Bevo absolutely deserves a rematch. And uh, we'll see if he gets it, man. I don't I don't like someone taking the first L. I would much rather them... Um, I, I'd much rather them have given that a draw right there. Because I don't like seeing somebody take their first L that way. Yeah. You know, due to judges losing two belts off a off of judgment. Like, that wasn't even... I mean, you know, that shouldn't even... You, mean, lo you look at the judges and you see what's going down. You can tell what's going down, you know? Yeah. Uh, you can see who they're probably going to be voting for, right? And if Bivol don't knock this dude out, and sometimes not known can, to knock dudes out. And then sometimes you can listen to the commentators and you say, okay, I see. Which way they sway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to sway it this way and, and, and it seems like the judges are listening to what sometimes the commentators Man, well, it seems like saying, they all had a meeting yeah, before yeah, the fight yeah, and they yeah, all got yeah, an agenda. Exactly, because I'll be like, he's saying this, but I'm seeing something different from yeah, what man. he's saying. Yeah, man. But, you know, uh, I think Bivol won the fight. Uh, I do hope they have a rematch. Uh, also, uh, it's not listed here. Uh, it's an official, I believe, of yesterday. Uh, Sebastian Fandura and Earl Spence are going to be fighting in January. So, again, I said, you know, Derek James will be on the show here in a couple weeks. We're going to talk to him about quite a bit. And I'm sure that's going to come up. Uh, going to ask Derek about the situation with Earl, uh, what he knows, and, you know, how things are going on. Like, well, you know, I ain't going to, you know. We're going we gonna to talk. We're going to talk. See what's going on. I don't know who's we're training. We're going to talk Earl. real talk. That's, that's all. We're yeah, going to we talk gonna, real like, talk. Like we like to do. We're going to have that conversation, man. Yeah. I don't. One minute Earl's retired, next minute he's fighting, you know? And, and there's going to be some stipulations, right? WBO has stepped in and uh, named Crawford the champion or something like that. So um, huh? I don't think Earl spins. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there's some things going on. I got to read it again. But we'll see what's up with that fight. It's going to be a good one, though. It's going to be a good one, man. Um, it's going to be a very good fight come January. It's official. So, last but not least, we are officially less than a month away from Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. You don't think it's going to happen still? I'm just so exhausted with it, man. It's just like this. I mean, until they fight, until they until they get in the ring and Michael Buffer start talking, yeah. I don't believe it. Well, hypothetically, hypothetically, hypothetically who you got in this one? If Mike Tyson, if it's not rigged, Mike Tyson's gonna. If they fight for real, Mike Tyson's gonna knock him out. Yeah. If they <laughs> if they fight for real, now I'm not saying that they are. Yeah. But if they fight for real because there is no Jake Paul. You know. So a, this is what I this is what I'm seeing a lot of right. So I was watching this Jake Paul uh, and uh, what's my guy that played in the XFL the uh, the kid that. Making YouTube videos, got kicked out of college. Uh, destroying. Yeah. Jake Paul, it was an old video. And um, him and Destroying were just jacking around or whatever. Uh, Logan Paul was out there. They were all racing, like running 140 or something like that, right? Yeah. Jake Paul, and this is this triggered my thoughts immediately. Jake Paul says to Destroying, if you let me win, I'll pay you a lot of money. To destroying before they raced, destroying was like, bro, I ain't letting you win, and like, he didn't. He, he smoked him. Yeah. 
But Jake Paul said, if you let me win, I'll pay you a lot of money. I wonder how many times Jake Paul's had that conversation. But this is the thing. Mike Tyson has so much money, it's hard to pay Mike Tyson. That's what I'm saying. Some on Supercar. First off, or me. I'm just talking about me. You got to pay me way more money than I ever had to impress me. Yeah. If you pay me the same amount of money that I've had 25 times, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. And I don't think man. that Jake Paul got enough money to pay Mike Tyson to do nothing. Yeah. I just don't think so. Yeah. That's just... That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. You know that young money grow long nowadays. That, that young money. Hey, Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson made about seven hundred million. Yeah, Mike ain't worried about no dollars. <laughs> All I'm saying now, he ain't got it. Yeah. You know I'm talking about what he didn't made and had and went through his hands, been in the hundreds of millions. And I don't think Jake Paul done made more money than Mike Tyson. Oh, I don't think so either. But I'm not sure. No, I no. Mean, I, I don't, I don't he may have so. more. Yeah, but he ain't made more. Oh yeah, you're right about that. You're I'm right saying about I'm, that. I didn't say have. Yeah, he yeah. ain't made. Man, Mike, Mike Tyson made almost a billion dollars, Absolutely. and now you come with a, a four hundred thousand. I'm not impressed. That can't. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Nah. That's just me, Jake. Yeah, I mean, so I, I now think, he can, Now he might win, but I don't think he's gonna be because he paid Mike. Tyson. Yeah, I, I don't. You, you think Mike you Tyson? Think, you think they all got a chance in this fight? Because no. Because this is the whole thing. He just said Mike he Tyson win. don't have enough. This is just my. Mike Tyson is kind of like, oh, you don't have enough sense to bribe. Because yeah. you put, you'll pay um a million dollars not to do something, but then when the competitive spirit gets, I ain't thinking I, about I, the I can't let you have I'm that, thinking dog. about, I'm thinking about if we up here exchanging hands, yeah. bam, bam, and you hit me, bam. I ain't thinking about it. I'm gonna let him win the meal. I can't let I'm you I'm thinking have that, about though. he hit me. I'm finna knock his ass out. Yeah, that's and it. And that's what Mike Tyson gonna do. That's it. If he don't knock you out, he'll bite your ear off. That's he it. gonna do. He'll do something crazy, man. Yeah. Mike Tyson will eat your children. He said that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, he did say that. That's what he said. He did say that. <laughs> by the Vander Holyfield. Yeah. That was I mean, I'm just saying. Oddly you know, enough. So when you get dudes like that. And I ain't even trying to be funny. Mike Tyson, little like, oh, I'm getting a little toad. Yeah, a little, little toad. Off. Ain't nothing wrong with a little toad. Off. I ain't, oh, hey, because I ain't got nothing wrong with being told. Yeah. God, <laughs> like, if I say he's a little like me, I think he's a great guy. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he legitimate. He legitimate. Legitimate. And I don't think and he is who he is. You may start off bribing him, but in the middle of the fight, he be like, hell no. Yeah, it ain't going down it like that, bro. I'll give your money back. Not today. Before I let you bust me upside my head. Hey, and hey. I won't bite your ear off. Mike Tyson, you say the wrong thing, man. Hey. Mike Tyson, loose pit bull in the room. Like, oh, straight man, up. I he, seen still, that. he still make dudes nervous yeah, in interviews. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike was on uh Mike was on It Is What It Is a couple weeks. And he had Cam and, <laughs> and Mason that nervous. Yeah. You know? But I, <laughs> if they say the wrong thing, Mike will charge them up. I ain't yeah. talking about just talking. Mike is that dude for real. Absolutely, man. man. Mike is that dude. Hey, I lose people with no chain, dog. Yeah. Like, never know, man. Yeah. You never know. So, y'all know what time it is now, man. It's time for I am O. In my opinion, huh? what you got for this week, huh? I gotta take a deep breath, lean back, yeah, and take another side, yeah, because this is my opinion. There's no facts on it. I think that money has taken the competitive edge out of sports. Damn. Because you got guys out there making business decisions instead of competitive decisions. Yeah. I mean, when I see Kawhi Leonard get <laughs> whatever, hundreds, so many hundreds of millions of dollars, and then he got to rest everything down. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> you know, and then when I see guys that get all the money, because this is over the, this has been a theme over the last few years. When a guy get their money, they don't play the same. Anymore. And the personification of that is Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons got his money. He ain't competitive. He don't care. He going to the Met Gala and all of that. And as soon as C.D. Lamb signed his contract, you know what I seen on the uh, YouTube the next day after he signed his 137 million? Oh, look at C.D. Lamb car collection. You got a car collection, you got $136 million, but you complain that the ball ain't directly in your hand. You don't want to go across the middle. You don't want to do it. I mean, I'm just saying to yeah. me, I'm just using these guys. They ain't the only ones. It's a whole bunch of them. When I, when I see James Harden in the NBA playoffs, in the fourth quarter, he won't even take a shot. Dang. And all you do is shoot. 
Yeah. But you but you worry that if you go too hard, you might hurt yourself and come and hurt your money for the next money. To, this is just my opinion. I have no facts on it, but I'm just looking at the players in, in four or five, not only one sport, two sports, three sports, four sports, five sports, that they don't compete as hard as they did before they got the money. Yeah. We have a perfect example of this year. CD not competing like he did last year. Dak throw nine interceptions all last year, got his money, now he throw six already in six games. I mean, you know, so yeah, it, it looked look like no more. it looked like you way ahead of the pace. We got San Francisco for, next. Yeah, it looked like you hey way ahead of the pace of nine because you got eleven more games left and, and you, you throw six, six and six. Yeah, man. So it looked like you're on your way to 15, 16. You in the Josh Allen category now like he without the touchdown. Back in that fifteen yeah, so, and eight games like the year yeah, before. So, so to me, this is in my opinion that money has taken the competitive edge out of sport. When I see when I see Trayvon Diggs running away from contact in a contact store, but he got his ninety million dollars, not last year, year before. Yeah. He got his ninety million, but now you're in a contact sport, but you don't want contact. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of that stuff is just not it don't sit well with all because it it looks like you are making business decisions rather than competitive Absolutely. Decisions. Absolutely, man. I, I agree with you on And that. that's in my opinion. That's a fact. That's a fact. In, the, in your opinion as well. Yeah. In, in my it, opinion, it's your opinion. A fact. <laughs> but that don't, in my opinion, it's a fact. Yeah. But that don't make it a fact in real in life. Real life. It's a fact to me too. You yeah. Know, but not necessarily in real life. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion, it's time for airports to implement object and facial recognition. Airports, government buildings, places like that. You know, places that require you to stand in this long Egyptian line just to walk, walk through the, the, the metal detector. I'm in line the other day. I didn't, I'm surprised I'm out the line right now. 500 people. We haven't come up with a better system in 2024 than those little detractable, expandable things that you put in the slide into the poles, you know, the ropes. And you gotta go back and, and you gotta forth. zigzag back and forth. Until you get up to the desk. Mind you, I'm 15 yards from the desk, but I gotta walk 1,500 yards to get to that thing because of all the zigzags. Bruh, technology, man. Yeah. Let's advance this thing a little bit. Object recognition. You know what object recognition will do? Under your clothes, in your bag, whatever, it will recognize an object that is shaped like a gun, shaped like a weapon. Then you sick them. Put security on them. Facial recognition. You know what facial recognition does? It recognizes your face. It recognizes your, your record if you're a threat. Right? We need to go ahead and move this thing forward a little bit in these airports. Okay. I'm all about the user experience, man. That's why I provide you guys with music. That's why we try to make this as pleasant of an experience as possible can. That stuff matters to me. I know what I like. I know what keeps me captivated. Hey, airport, bro. Like, we ain't building pyramids, dog. You know what I'm saying? We walking around. We got computers in our backpacks. You know, you making me take my shoes off. And walk through this long line, bro. Like, U.S. population, we need to vote on privacy laws, <laughs> privacy laws that allow for facial and object recognition in government spaces. That's all I got to say about that. I totally agree with that one That's right there. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. But uh, anyways... That's enough of in my opinion, but man, we definitely appreciate y'all joining us. We missed y'all last week, YouTube. Yeah, we missed being oh, live, man. Oh man, I felt like a bad kid had to go sit out in punishment. But we good, man. We back, man. We'll be back sometime this weekend with a watch party of some sort. We're not sure exactly on what. On what? But on because when? the Cowboys got to buy this week. Yeah, but you don't know the Dame plays, Colorado oh, plays, so. We can get it in on something. Yeah, we got my have to get Colorado. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll get we'll it see, in. We'll see, but we'll let you know in advance. In advance, we will let you know for sure, man. But appreciate y'all tuning in. If you hadn't, 
Go ahead and go hit that subscribe button, that like button for this show right here. Hit that notification bell so you know when we're on next time. We're here every Wednesday for sure, unless notified otherwise, sometime around noon. Appreciate you tuning in to Noonish. See you next week, if, if not sooner. Peace. Peace out. Welcome to a realm where the pulse of sports thrills and the spark of technology sizzles. Join Ronald Unk Bolware and your charismatic host, Jay, a aka Jonathan Anderson. Together, they unpack the latest in sports and technology. This is Noonish Sports and Tech. Hey.